We're here at Break the Barrier. This is an awesome event, a one-time event. And you're here, I'm here, and we're gonna be bringing it to you straight. I hear Abdul the Butcher is here. That's right, Abdul the Butcher, right here at Break the Barrier. I also hear rumors that Shane Douglas is here. That's right, folks, Shane Douglas. So I'm gonna be giving you a little bit of an insight. And my cameraman right here will just take a little peek around. We have some of the fans here. They're all over the place. They're coming in, they're coming in for Break the Barrier. So this is gonna be exciting. It's a one-time event, 12 cards. And at the very end, the Barrier Rumble, the Barrier Rumble, where the number one wrestler, the number one wrestler and Break the Barrier will come out with a trophy. So get ready, get set, because here we come, live! I'm here with Stevie Richards, the man that built the ECW. And, a lot, and I've been hearing a lot of shit about Shane Douglas, and I've been seeing it on the websites and all Watch over the- Watch oh, I'm sorry, Stevie. Well, what do you have to say about it? You know, it is true. There is a lot of stuff going around on the internet and especially uh, throughout the wrestling world right. the past few weeks saying, well, what did Shane say? Come and get it, Stevie? That's what I said. That's I mean, I, said. Come in, I don't even know what he wants me to come get or anything. I mean, his, his lunch, his dinner or whatever. But Shane, I don't know why you're talking a bunch of crap about me. I don't know why you're saying things about me. We used to be very good friends. You, and now Shane you Douglas... Shane were friends? Yeah. I mean, what, you find it hard to believe? No, just because everything he's saying and stuff. Yeah, well, I find that a little hard to believe, too. Well, all he's really saying is come and get it. He's going to pick my opponent here at Break the Barrier, and everything else is pretty much up in the air. The only thing I don't understand is why is Shane Douglas talking so much shit when he's coming to tonight's event, May 15th, here at the ECW Arena, the house that I built with a broken ankle? Does he want to wrestle me? I mean, because if he wants to wrestle me, I think that probably would be the stupidest thing that he ever did. Uh, I'm, I'm with you, Stevie, on this, man. I'm with you on this, Stevie. But I don't know. Shane is a big guy. This guy likes to straddle the fence a lot, don't you? Well, I don't know. You know, Shane... Well, you're running for mayor? Make a decision. I mean, what do you think? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You're the man, all right? Okay. I didn't ask you that, but, I mean, thanks for saying so. Okay. The point is, Shane, I don't know what your problem is, but you're opening up the show tonight, and then you're going to tell everybody what you're here for, and I'm going to hear it for the first time also. So... I think Shane Douglas and I are going to have a nice little conversation in front of a couple thousand people live. I think so. So you heard it from Stevie Richards, May 15th tonight. Hey Shane, I think you're in trouble. Steel Seed Wrestling is here tonight at Break the Barrier. Lord of the Dance, three guys are going to take it on. I'm going to bring on Mike Quackenbush right now. Hey Mike, hey Mike, come over here man. I hear you guys are doing a Lord of the Dance tonight. That's right. Uh, it's Lord of the Dance. It's going to be a lot like the All Japan minute, Triple Crown. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you doing out here? This is my promo time. I'm out here to promo time. This is my time. Well, Lou Diamond hey, Phillips hey, called hey, me out. Hey, 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 what is your time? It's not your time to get the promo. This is Lou Marconi's time, Buster. Hey, listen. Why don't you hit that? Go ahead. Go ahead, do that. Oh, like that, huh? That's what I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah? Oh, yeah? Yeah? Well, uh, it's the Lord of the Dance title match tonight, challenge. Um, I can't wait to see what they, these guys do in the ring, man, you know? Officially, ScoopCentral.com presents Break the Barrier. The largest gathering of independent wrestling promotions in the country. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the founder and editor of ScoopCentral.com, the man they call Al Setso. Please welcome the one and only, Mr. Al Isaac. Let me hear you, ECW Arena! You feeling good, Phil? And we're better to make history than in Philly. We got 13 different organizations. We got 11 world titles on the line. The Pitbulls are back in ECW Arena. Stevie Richards is back in ECW Arena. Abdullah the Butcher is back in Philly. And ladies and gentlemen, when I'm talking about making history, when I'm talking about writing another chapter in the book of wrestling, there is only one man I'm talking about when we're talking about making history in this building. The man who made history in this building, it is! Good evening and welcome to the sold out ECW Arena for Break the Barrier. This is Bob Levy live in Philly. 
we got a great show for you tonight, but first we're going to bring out Shane Douglas. Got a few words to say about his ECW boss, Natty, who did not look happy backstage. We got Al coming down doing play-by-play -play with me, so let's listen to what Shane has to say. there's been a few rumors on the internet about the franchise Shane Douglas. I will comment by saying this, and you can all go back and tickle the keys tonight and send ECW a message. I've never been a stranger to controversy. I've never strayed from it. I've stared it right in the eye. I started by throwing down the NWA belt in this ring and built the fucking company called Extreme Championship Wrestling. How many people want to hear the franchise shoot a little bit tonight? Well then, goddammit, I haven't planned on it, but let's fucking do it. There are a lot of people in ECW that bust their balls every fucking night, and mostly it goes unappreciated because of a little money ball.
way of the ring, I will give you performances that other people, both in ECW and other companies, dream they could have. I will bring dignity to any match and any belt that I wear around my waist that only Shane Douglas can do in 1999. I threw a belt out of this ring and I raised another belt up, and today that belt is recognized worldwide as the ECW World's Heavyweight Title. Interesting. A lot of questions back and forth. You know, what's going to happen here? What Shane's challenge to Stevie going to be? We're going to find out right now. I'm looking forward to it. Stevie Richards, I've known you for a long time. I've watched you progress from being a guy who walked out here as a lackey to be the true star in our sport because you love the fucking sport, right? In this ring, in this building, there have been a lot of people in here. There's a guy back there whose neck got broken in this ring. He's still in the sport because he loves it. You've been hurt, Stevie Richards, recently by two guys, Jimmy Cicero and Tom Brandy. I think it was a collapsed lung that put you in the hospital for a few days, correct? Well, I understand that you need a problem of having an opponent, and the internet said it was going to be me versus you. My friend, I've got no problem with you. I just wish you luck. Because tonight, Whoa. what I'm going to give you is what I started the fucking revolution of ECW with. The first ever three-way dance. You get not one opponent, but you get two, Stevie Richards. You get to beat the fucking shit out of Jimmy Cicero and Tom Brandy right here tonight in an ECW three-way fucking dance. Oh, there you go. It's payback time tonight. <laughs> 
for the APWF title, a three-way dance with Stevie Richards. He looks I happy. may not be a commissioner or anything like that or wear a cowboy hat, but I can tell you this, I've watched you perform, and I've watched you, and I know what that super kick is all about. I felt it right upside my jaw. Lay it on those two motherfuckers tonight, and you walk out of here and give these people what's called a ball-busting payback for the price they paid for their ticket. These fans are definitely ready for this fight tonight. Punctured lung and all, he's going for it tonight. Could I, could I just ask everybody in the building one question? Did anyone miss me? <laughs> That's obvious. It's and not I pretty fans out there in Philadelphia, tonight. but at least they showed Collapse up to see this. lung or not, herniated disc or not, missing hip or not, Tom Brandy and Jimmy Cicero are going to get their fucking ass kicked. It's a laundry list of injuries there from Stevie Richards. Yeah. I hope he's ready for this. And he's going up against two guys that already injured him pretty badly. It's a little fun out here, so if you'll indulge me, I'm going to stick out here and introduce the first match. Why? Because they're from my hometown, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Steel City Wrestling. Oh, here we go, kids. It's another three-way dance. It's four. The Lord of the Dance. It's a special three-way dance being led to the ring by his manager, Heartstart Drew Lazario, from Cleveland, Ohio, weighing 225 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Beef Stew Lou Marconi. Here we go, Beef Stew Lou Marconi coming to the ring. Guy is a great technician in there. I mean, there's no doubt he's got the physique. Plus, he's the only one in this match who has a manager, so that's got to give him another advantage out there. Uh, he's going to have to watch the guy on the outside. It's going to make it a lot easier for him in the ring. But, I mean, look at that. I mean, I didn't know Vanilla Ice got back into business. <laughs> kind of a, a midget version. I don't know what that is. I guess Liberace has a grandson. There you go. A great deal of fashion sense right there. And he can strut it. Look at that. He's like a runway model out there. And I'm sure the people in Philly love to see that. Oh, yeah. No question. He's going to dear himself to the Philly crowd. Oh, yeah. There they go. Yeah. Showing their love. Yeah. Apparently, he's, he's telling... On the cover of people... He's telling Shane he's on the cover of a magazine. I know a fake when I see one. And brother, this is a fake magazine. You are on a cover of this month's Gay Time. Oh, man. Hello. Al, don't you have that, uh, that <laughs> magazine at home? The subscription ran out in October. Oh, okay. I'm just checking. But I got a great phone for the subscription. You got to see it. <laughs> the old penis phone. The number two contestant from Trenton, New Jersey. Let's see. Weighing 300 pounds, the ghetto superstar, Don Montoya. Here he comes, Don Montoya. Oh, that's a mountain of a man. Big, big man, but I'll tell you, don't let his size deceive you. He can move in that ring. He can move in a buffet, too, line. I'll tell you that. This man is a big man, but look at, look at how angry he looks, especially from living in Trenton, New Jersey. I'd be angry, too, if I came out. Oh, a little pantomime going on. Well, Steel City moment shots. Yes. Again, you're, you're already you're seeing a difference in style. You got the technician in there, and you got the big man. And he can't even wear the belt. Here he comes. A lot of people are saying Mike Quackenbush is the future of this sport. I have never seen anyone fly like Mike Quackenbush. He is very quick. Even though he's a small guy, I'd put him up against any big guy that's here tonight. Oh, no doubt. I mean, he would fit in with the cruiserweight in any federation right now. And like I said, you got three different styles. You got the ring technician in Marconi, you got Montoya with the size, and you got the aerial technique of Mike Quackenbush. 
This is, this is definitely going to be exciting. And you got to watch out for the manager outside. He's going to cause a lot of trouble. We'll see what happens with this. No doubt. And this is for the Lord of the Dance title, specifically created for this show. Very similar to the All Japan Triple title. It will only be defended several times a year in Steel City. So whoever walks away is going to have that strap for a while. Our Lou Marconi is getting the coin flip now. Only two men will start off this match. The third man gets a bye. He will be allowed in the ring pretty much whenever he wants, but has to get in by the time that does the first pin. That's the spot you want to be. You want to be able to hang out in the back and watch what's going on. Oh, let the other two guys just beat the hell out of one another. Go in when you are good and ready. All right, so here's the coin flip. I hope they don't have the ref from the Super Bowl calling this one because they'll call for the wrong guy. <laughs> well, that's it. He got tails. Marconi is getting the bye. So it will be Mike Quackenbush and Don Montoya starting this one off. The big man against the aerial specialist. How do you see this one going? I don't know. I think the big guy's going to crush him because look at the size of him. I mean, I once dated a girl that big, and believe me, I was afraid of her, and I watched my back every day. Why'd you date her? Because she, I was scared of her, that's why. <laughs> you know, that's my business, Al. All right, you make the call. Shane Douglas getting the accolades from the crowd. They love him at ECW Arena. Oh, it's great to see him, and this very well could be the last time they see him here. But he'll definitely be off to better things. Anything's better than playing in that arena. Look at that. <laughs> they can't hear you outside of the booth, can they? I hope not. <laughs> I want to get you out of here alive tonight. Here we go, kids. Break the barrier is underway. The first match. Okay, there's a certain amount of respect here. There's no uh, pre-existing feud between these two men. Yeah, but, but that'll change very quickly. You want to go for, they got the lock up. Louie goes behind him. See, it's just like, he's just wants a big guy, going to hold him down. He ain't going to have a chance. Gets him in an arm ringer. At least he's trying, he's not trying to match power with this guy. No. Going for the technical wrestling here. Yeah. Puts him in an arm bar. Having a little problem with the uh, crowd there, the big man. Getting a little grief. Oh, hip yeah. to us. Nice. You don't want to be there where this guy can put all his weight on top of you. Yeah, he's pushing on the shoulder right now. That's got to that's gotta hurt. Nothing fancy yet. He's not letting the little guy get away. Once he gets away, you know he's going up in the air on this big guy. Oh, that's it. Hit and run completely. Try and get the man off his feet and go to that aerial attack. Oh, nice toe takedown. He's got the big man down now. That's where he wants him, where he can't use his size and power. But he's in the rope. They're going to have to break it. I right, respect in the ref so far. You know, all these guys tonight, they got to be under a lot of pressure performing in ECW Arena. And they're not in front of their hometown crowd. They're not in front of their regular fans. It's completely got to be disorienting for them. Yeah, well, it looks like he's not having a problem with the audience. There. He likes yelling at them, you know? I haven't seen him this mad since they closed down the concession stand. Uh-oh. Quackenbush not wanting oh, to see this show. There he goes. Shows them a little bit of his backside. There. That'll make the, hand, the fans in Philly happy. Oh, full moon in Philly tonight. Yes. <laughs> Setting up to lock up again. Looks him in a full Nelson. I don't know how he got him in a full Nelson, but he did. Long arms. Oh, that's very long arms. Oh, reversal. Another reversal. They just keep going back and forth. Nice little takeover into a headlock. That's what he's got to do. He's got to choke the little man out. Oh, I'd say he's got all his weight on his back right now. Okay. I don't believe that was directed right at us, but... It's, it sure sounded that way, but... <laughs> it's getting the fans angry. Yes. Oh, here we go. Off the rope. Oh, oh a little dance there. Oh. He drops, drops the fist on the head. 
Oh, I'm telling you, if Quackenbush doesn't take to the air soon, he might not have the opportunity. Nah. Into the turnbuckle. He's, he's draining him right now. It's all Montoya so far. Shot to the stomach, another one to the head. Ooh, nice forearm to the head. And you, you got to be thinking, both these guys, you still have Dom, you still have well, Lou Marconi on the outside waiting to come in. You can't expend all your energy here. You still got a third man to beat if you want to go home with that Lord of the Dance title. And he's a fresh man, and that's going to be a big thing for him when he comes in. And he's going for the pin. Ooh, kick out. Oh, I can't. I mean, it can't be easy to kick out underneath this guy in no. normal circumstances, much less after you've taken some damage the way Quackenbush has. No. Oh, so, takes him down right on his face. Oh, oh and nice leg drop, for Quackenbush. Oh, nice. nice series of moves. He goes for the pin. Well, it's going to take more than to hold down a man that size than that move. Only two count. But he's coming back to life. He's, he's showing a little bit of life there. Throw him into the corner. We got a reversal into the corner. Uh oh. Oh, get away. away. Oh. Backwards mule kick into him. Right into the gut. Knocked the wind right out of Montoya. Old martial arts right oh, here. Spinning kick to the chin. Nice. Trying to take the big man over. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Here comes Beef Stew already beating down on, on Quackenbush. Oh, and the referee. Hot shot doing his job. See, that's what's good about having a manager. Under a clothesline, misses a double clothesliner. Another missed double clothesline. What? Okay. We're not mutual respect. Yes. Oh, okay. They're bowing like we're, we're working in Japan. Mutual admiration side. Oh, no! Uh, they, they all have the same idea at the same time. All went for the double cross, and all three of them pay for it. Big man still slow to get up. Here we go. He's thrown into the rope. Comes off. Nice power oh. slam. Nice power slam. Goes for the pin. Marconi only gets a two count. Now he's working on the big man here. See what he can do with him with the ropes. Nice elbow. Nice elbow on the big man. Like I said, Beef Stew Marconi, a great technician in the ring. Whether it's tying a guy up for a submission, whether it's just your basic moves, he, he knows them all. He's definitely been in the ring for a while. You can tell that with his back. Well, here we go. Snap suplex. Oh, nice. Quality. Nice. He's going to go for the pin, but the big man is on him. This is not going to be easy. Even with the three men in, remember, you have to pin your two opponents. This will not end with just one pinfall on either guy. Off the ropes. Oh, into, uh, oh, Boston Crab. He's bringing him out to the middle of the rope. The middle of the ring. Uh-oh, the big man's even going to go on top. Oh, a camel clutch. Off the rope. Nice oh. kick to the face. Oh. Better call the dentist, my friend. He definitely lost a tooth on that. Now he can sit in the audience with the rest of the toothless people here in Philly. It's like a jack-o'-lantern convention out there. It is. Oh! Into the top turnbuckle. Tough to believe Marconi was the fresh man just a couple of minutes ago. He's not looking too fresh anymore. Here we go. Oh, uh, nice. Oh, spinning Hurricanrana off the... Brings the man down, and he's out of the ring. Yep. Don Montoya taking a breather right there. Smart move on his part. Now Marconi also exiting the ring. They're taking it outside. He's got the big man by the head. What's he get? Just a few punches to the head. That'll do it. And Quackenbush now in the ring getting a breather. Oh, wait a second. Oh, oh, man. Takes to the air. A spinning corkscrew on top of both men oh, bringing and there, them down. Oh, there are, there is nothing but concrete out there, folks. No pads here in ECW Arena. Quackenbush first to his feet, but you know he had to take some damage from that move too. Very impressive. And now he's throwing him back in. Big man getting very slow to get up now. He he took a lot of that. 
Here we go. He's going for it. Oh, oh, spinning DDT off the top. Beautiful nice. move. That's all he has to do. He's got to get in the air on these guys. But just when you got one man down, there's someone waiting in the wings to take you on next. Nice reversal. Oh, rollover of the back. Blocks it. Three elbows to the head. Oh, Quackenbush is going for it again. Oh! Went to the well one too many times and paid for it. I can't believe he kicked out of that. Oh, only a two count. Quackenbush is still in this, but man, that had a kill. Now Montoya going after Lou Marconi here. Oh! oh. Another power bomb. Another a... kick out. Oh, a nice little drop kick to the face from he's on his knees. That's not bad. You really you are seeing the future of pro wrestling in the ring right now. These three men giving everything they got, and it's the first match. Yeah, this is only the first of many tonight. Oh, oh nice. Beautiful move by Quackenbush. And a kick out. Can't get the pen. He just can't get it. Oh, and Hotshot is going crazy on the outside. His man has got to be very frustrated. Look at the look at oh. that. Unbelievable. Oh. He's going for the pen. One. Two. Oh. Only a two. What's it gonna take to put these men away? I think a shovel. Oh! Once the other guy gets pinned, the other guy comes in, takes him right off. You don't have a chance. I said, oh. oh, belly to back on your head. He better get out of the ring and Quackenbush hanging outside. It. Now Montoya and Marconi have a chance here with Quackenbush. Oh, nice clothesline and the big man taking him down. Oh, oh look at hot him. shot on the outside. Yeah, hot shot wouldn't be doing that if he was standing up when he first went out there. Marconi can't put away Montoya. This is the time to do it with Quackenbush incapacitated. And here's oh, Shane, Shane Douglas. Douglas comes out. Douglas puts Hot Shot down. Oh, Lou Marconi distracted. You might say that's Shane Douglas' better turn fashion around. statement there. Montoya's waiting for him. Marconi better turn around. Nails him. That could be it, kids. And he's setting them up for something here. Oh, the big man's going to go up the rope. Uh oh, Mark. Beef Stew Mark, Lou Marconi in a lot oh, of trouble man. here. A whole heap of trouble. Here he comes. Oh, splash oh, from the middle rope. It. No way he's getting up. No way. That's there we it. Go. Beef Stew Lou Marconi is done. Beef Stew is off the menu. <laughs> now, Quackenbush and Montoya, one on one. This should, this should be great, these two. Quackenbush really not looking too good out there. No. But either is he, but he must have just realized where he bought that outfit. <laughs> what was I thinking? Lou Marconi has been eliminated. Don Montoya what taking his here? time. Oh, oh! A spinning leg drop. Nasty. This could be it for Quackenbush. One, two. No, he kicks out. I don't know how this little guy is doing this. It's incredible. It really is. He is putting on a show for these folks here tonight. He's probably 150 pounds less than him. And, and look, look at him. Oh, he's picking him up for the slam. And down. Setting him up. Oh, don't tell me he's going back up on top. Oh, he's going to put Quackenbush through the ring at this point. He's going up. I just hope this ring can hold him because we have more matches later on. Oh. The crowd is smelling it oh, here. And he's telling the crowd he's number one and where they can go. Here, here we go. The top. No! Nobody home. Out of the way. He's got to get up now. He's got to. Oh. Can Quackenbush get to his feet? Both men the worse for wear. Fans starting to get behind Quackenbush. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Kick the big man He's down. going upstairs. Here we go. This is where he's the most lethal. Quackenbush from the top. 
Oh, a headbutt from the top. Shades of Chris Benoit. One, two. No. Oh, and he kicked out. Quackenbush, I thought he had him at that point. See, he's going to bring him back to the rope. Another reversal. Oh, oh no. Sitting. Forget about it. He's got him up high now. And Bam! Bam! Slam right down on your back. That's got to be it here. Don Montoya. One, One two. two. No! I can't believe he kicked out of that move. Oh, my. He kicked out. Quackenbush, he, he cannot have much left after this punishment. Now, he's been in there, he's been in there too long with them. He's tried everything in his arsenal, and he can't get that big guy down. There's Montoya, no it's, you know, you got to just one last power move to put him away. This could be it. Another power bomb here. No! Oh, he's out of it. Montoya thought he had him there. Quackenbush from the second rope. DDT! Uh -oh. This has got to be it. Montoya is not getting up on this one. No! Oh, oh, two and a half. Unbelievable! The ref's from Philly. Can he count to three? <laughs> this is unbelievable. Oh, Quackenbush has to be frustrated at this point. What move can he pull out of his bag that's going to put away Don Montoya? A 1978 Buick. Oh! oh on the head. Right, right on the, the head. Right on the neck. There's no way he's getting a one. He's got to be out. No, he kicks out! Quackenbush kicks out! Unbelievable. Oh, Montoya... Uh, he's not too happy with the ref now. No, Montoya. not at all. He wants a quicker three count. Quackenbush. He's wasting too much time with the ref. He should be on him right now. Oh, rookie mistake here. Quackenbush, he's over the top. Oh. oh. On the apron. Pulls him down by the hair. He's called for it. Oh, oh. Huracurana into a roll up. It's That's over. It. By Quackenbush. Lightning Mike Quackenbush! Lightning Mike Quackenbush goes back to Steel City Wrestling, the first Lord of the Dance champion. Davey has beaten Goliath tonight. Oh, man, you talk about a clinic for cruiserweights. You just watched one. Unbelievable, and the fans love him here in Philly. Mike Quackenbush. Remember that name, folks. You're going to be seeing big things from this young man in the future. What a great match for our first match of a long night. We got a long night. We got plenty of gold up. It's going to be unbelievable. Cut the music. My name's Mark Connors. That's the most steel city record in Pittsburgh. I will bring Lou Martoni out of here. I want you guys to get up and pop for all three of these guys for busting their ass in this building tonight. President of Steel City Wrestling here on hand. He wants them all in the ring. All three of them put on an amazing, amazing match. A headline match in any arena, and this is just the first here at Break the Barrier. This is just the beginning. Well deserved. I mean to ask you, have you seen Abdul the Butcher backstage? Yes. You did see him? Yes, very scary individual. We still have no idea where or when he's popping up. No scheduled match. He's not scheduled to be on the card. He showed up sometime last night. He had he was carrying something. One of the workers described it as a box. Someone else said it was a casket. I have no clue what he's intending to do here tonight. Well, Abdullah doesn't like to be told what he's going to do. He'll just do whatever he wants oh, to do. Wait a second, Quackenbush here. Excuse me, I gotta be in line for Star Wars tickets in 15 minutes. <laughs> and Star Wars already, and that's a month away, and he's still waiting in line. Quackenbush, that could be could be a name of a character in Star Wars. Yes, Quacken. <laughs> Look out, Darth Vader. Quackenbush is behind that rock. The force is definitely with him. Unbelievable. And it's just the start. Our next bout comes from Baltimore, Maryland, and he's hailing from Maryland. Championship Wrestling! And tonight is for the MCW Heavyweight title. Our first contestant, hailing from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and tonight is weighing in at 235 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Romeo Valentino! Romeo Valentino looking to regain the Maryland Championship Wrestling title here tonight. 
another really sound technical wrestler. Got a lot of tools in his arsenal, but he's got a big challenge ahead of him. Very big. He's a big man himself, but let's see what he can do out there. I'd say he's got he's got a you know he's he's taking on Mosh tonight. You know it's tough to call Mosh a veteran, but he's definitely the more experienced man. interesting choice of ring music for this evening. You see, I'm glad that he can bring love music back to oh, wrestling. You romance know, is definitely in the air. Yes, this is definitely a romantic song, and the people from Philly love it. Look at him. I almost feel like slow dancing. Yes. Al, get your hand off my leg. I'm, I'm sorry. trying to do something. I'm trying to do here. <laughs> Headbanger Marsh, now Beaver Cleavage in the WWF. WS, yeah. He's looking good, too. Yeah, you always question when guys go from tag team wrestling to singles, can they pull it off? But obviously, the MCW champion, Mosh is having no problem making the transition. Now he's got the belt, and he's doing his sing along with the audience. You can't beat that. Oh, the crowd chanting Beaver, and he's loving it. Everybody wants Beaver. And now they're asking him where his mother is. Mrs. Cleavage. Uh, she's very hot. Well, there you go, kids. You all what you eat. So that makes me a happy meal? <laughs> Pretty much. You are a happy meal. Pal. I am a happy meal. Here we go. Headbagger Mosh against Romeo Valentino. Starting things off, these two no strangers to one another. They've been going back and forth for that MCW title. And we go off the ropes. Oh, shoulder tackle. No, leapfrog. He got caught there going on. Didn't quite get the height he was hoping. Now. Oh, a slam. Big power slam. Could this be it? Like I said, Mosh is having a lot of success here as a singles competitor, but you know. Yeah, I'm going to miss the headbangers, for one. Yeah, they, they were actually very good. They had the tag team champions, WWF, for a while. And look at them, just slapping them. Slapping them like the neighbor's kid. <laughs> there you go. And now Valentino coming back with a couple of slaps of his own. I, I think he likes it. I think he's actually just going to make Mosh more mad. There he is. Off the nice back body drop. Look at the oh, height on that. Nice height. Mosh definitely on his game tonight here in ECW Arena. There you go. Mosh now making it an interactive evening for the fans. It's good. Bring the kids out. Enjoy yourself. That's what I say. And now everyone's heckling the one man in the crowd. Say, Mosh better concentrate on his man. If he sticks too close to playing with the crowd, he's going to lose some gold here tonight. Valentino getting to his feet now. Oh, pokes him in the eye. Mosh got poked in the eye. Nice reversal by Mosh into the corner. Oh! Valentino catches him with the foot. That with a boot to the face. And now a nice clothesline up the second rope. Val now Valentino take taking advantage of it. Taking advantage here. Valentino on top, setting up for the suplex. Nice suplex. Go for that pin. Come on. One, two. Now he's not going to get him with a suplex. He's going to have to string together a few power moves to put away someone like Mosh. Well, Mosh is going for it. He's pulling down the ref. Tried to pull his pants down. Well, after that intro song, I wouldn't. I don't know what to expect from Mosh anymore. Valentino taking his time. He's up on the top rope. Here he goes. Looking up. Oh. Drops the elbow from the top rope. One, two. Mosh kicks out. Oh, he's choking him out. Come on, ref. I'm surprised Mosh is letting him get away with this sort of thing. 
Like I said, you know, he's not a veteran, but he's got a lot more ring time than Romeo. Small package. March going for the pen. Kick out. Like I was saying, he's got the experience. Oh, met with the clothesline. Valentino ran him over with that clothesline. Valentino's got kind of a, a Bret Hart meets Ultimate Warrior look going here tonight. Yep, he's got all that flair on his boots and that, jumping around. And the pink and black attack looking trunks. But it's going to be more than an outfit that's going to have to beat Marsh tonight. Oh, off the ropes. Going for the pin here. And Marsh kicks out. You ain't going to get him down with an elbow and pin him. There's no way. I'll tell you, Marsh, since he's gone to a solo career, he's looking much bigger. You're much more defined in the upper body. Plus, he grew some hair, finally. Yes, got that Chia head thing going. But yeah. he's, he's looking really good, because now you can't depend on a tag team partner in solo competition. You don't have that extra man out there for you to get the, your extra second wind. you got to do it all by yourself. Marsh trying to get the audience into this here. And they're behind him. And they're both up to their feet. Marsh clubbing away on him. And a third. Off the ropes. Oh, nice drop kick by Marsh. Nice height. Valentino draped over the second rope. Here comes Marsh. Oh! Valentino starting to be in a little bit of trouble here. Doesn't know where he is, just wandering around the corner. Here comes Marsh, pulls the referee in. Oh, the referee is down. Valentino comes off with a clothesline. Obviously, the ref took the, the biggest brunt of that last hit. Yeah, Marsh doing too much dance, and Valentino jumped all over him on that. Now Valentino going up to the oh, wait, top. Wait, who's this? It's Thrasher! Headbagger Thrasher! Pushing him off the top rope. Uh-oh, he's in big trouble, Valentino, now. Here they go. They set him up. The marsh pit. Oh, man. Oh, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we just witnessed history. That could be the last marsh pit ever. One, two, three. And that is over. all. Your winner and still nine championship wrestling champion, Thrasher coming out. It's good to see them back together again. It could be for the last time, folks. Oh, and now they're singing to one another. Oh, that's touching. That is touching. This is, uh, wait, they're going to hug. Oh. oh, what a moment. See, this, this is love. This is love of wrestling. Oh, and there goes Romeo Valentino. I don't think Valentino's in the mood for a hug right now. No, this was not his night. Marsh is protesting. He wants his song back on. He wants to hear some more Sandler, and he's not leaving the ring till they play it. Thrasher trying to talk him out of it. Looks like they're going to wait until it comes on. Okay. He could be here a while. Come on, get that sound, man. Put that song back on. You gotta wonder if Thrasher's gonna have as successful a singles career as Marsh is having. Oh, here we go. And the song begins again. Everybody's happy now at the ECW Arena. I, how come I never heard this song on the radio? You would think every prom would be playing this song. Yeah, this is this is a love song, you know? They should have had this in that movie Endless Love, I thought. Well, seeing as this wasn't written until 15, 16 years after Endless Love came out. Yeah, but the second one I was talking about. Al. Endless Love 2. Yes. Watch your boogaloo. Yes, that was a, that was a good. Oh, I didn't see that movie. What are you talking about? Look at everybody holding hands. Look at it. Oh, it's a love fest here. It is a love fest. A real up with people, Walton's Mountain kind of vibe here at ECW Arena yes. tonight. And there we go, Mosh and Thrasher, the headbangers. Could be for the last time seeing them as the headbangers. And Mosh retained the MCW Maryland Championship Wrestling heavyweight title here at Break the Barrier. There we go. We're going to watch you, Mosh. Don't worry about it. We'll watch you. I'm telling you, I'm getting misty. I'm telling you. I haven't felt like this since my prom. <laughs> we're getting ready for the third match here tonight. Let's see if it's as colorful as the first two. 
Our next match comes from Punta Tawny, PA, with the Allied Powers Wrestling Federation. Boy, it's going to be a groundhog against somebody. It is for the heavyweight championship, three-way champion. Oh, here we go, Stevie Richards. Our first contestant tonight hails from up in your Italy. It is weighing in at 265 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Tom Brandy. Tom Brandy. Ex-WWF star. Formerly known as Salvatore Sincere. He does not look happy. Yeah. Oh, the crowd's showing their love. Yeah, they're telling him he has to shave, I think. It's not an ECW show. He's right about that. That is true. Here we have Philadelphia's finest bunch of derelicts. Oh, boy. I didn't know he was running for mayor of Philly. <laughs> Clearly. You can call me Sal Sincere. You can call me a job. But don't call me Francis. You can call me anything you want. <laughs> but you know what? The fans are not happy with him. Not at all. Oh, a bitter, bitter man, Tom Brandy. You know yeah, they're not idiots. I'm here, and you're I here. Haven't been in this not all of them. Since 1994. A little history lesson here. Yeah, he was delivering a pizza back then. When I won the ECW Tag Team Belt with your idol, Tommy Dreamer. That is true. He did. Come a long way in five years. Has anybody watched it lately? Each and every one of you are here every time ECW runs his show. And now they have decided to rename Viking Hall ECW Titanic. Oh boy. Because that bitch is sinking faster than any boat that you've ever seen. I hope Brandy's got a car running right. waiting for him out back. what are you going to do then when the doors are shut and no more blood is spilt, no more tables are broken, no more bones are broken? You treat these wrestlers like a bunch of whores. There's plenty of whores in this room. Oh, oh man. Not. Whores get paid more money. You're Come on. You're not going to see any of us jump off that balcony. You know why? We're too smart, and it doesn't pay. Now the speech isn't too smart. No. They lost every superstar they had, including one Shane Douglas that was in this ring. Why didn't you chant? Why didn't you chant? Sell out. Sell out. Sell out. Oh, now he's telling them what they should be chanting. He should be in the audience with a sign, maybe, going along with them. Because you know why? I'll do the Rob Van Dam what I did to Stevie Richards just one month ago. I will send him ass up, face down, right to the hospital. That he did. Who else you got in this stuff? Taz. Taz, who else? Sabu. 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 Talks a lot of crap when there's nobody in the building. They're he not sure there. Does. That's four times. Sabu, That's five. What's going to happen to Sabu when he can't walk anymore? What are you people going to do for him then? You people are the biggest disgrace in the wrestling world. Well, I can't argue with him on that point. Well, who can with logic like that? No, You're it's... looking at the biggest bunch of losers in this country. You know what? They outnumber him 2,000 to 1. I would really be careful yes. with the next couple sentences. That's all you need is 2,000 people screaming with no teeth running after you. You don't need that. No. They'll be gummed at that outside the stadium. It's one of the biggest bunch of scum that this world represents. And the second contestant is making his return to the ACW arena. He is the original king of swing. Dancing, Stevie Richards. 
And here he comes, folks. Stevie Richards, return to ECW. Fans love him out here. They love him. It's payback time. It is, but I'll tell you, it's payback against two men who hurt you. And again, the odds really aren't in anyone else's favor. Richards was not, I mean, I'm assuming, was not prepared to face two men, but then again, neither was Jimmy Cicero or Tom Brandy. Yeah, that is true. They were only expecting to face one another. They had no, this is completely unexpected until Shane Douglas announced it earlier tonight. But as opposed to Brandy, they are loving Stevie Richards here in ECW Arena. Stevie also has 2,000 people behind him. Exactly. That's going to be a big, big, big benefit for him. But he's wasting a lot of energy here with the crowd. He's got two men he's got to fight. Here we go. Are these your people? Where were they when you were in the hospital, brother? When Taz took your career? Where were they then? Did they send you cards? Did they send letters? They send you. Next, he's going to tell him he's his father. <laughs> Turning him into the dark side over here. What's the matter? The truth hurts. Richards with a What's chair. The oh. You missed. <laughs> What's the matter? The truth hurts. Huh? You remember when Taz took you out, brother? Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Hey, brother, remember when he choked you out, brother? Where were these jack-offs then? They don't give a shit about you. What is Brandy hoping to accomplish here? I don't know. He's like, he's like an evil Dr. Ruth, it seems. He really is. He hails from New York, New York, and tonight weighs in at 245 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the white guy, Jimmy Cicero! Here comes Cicero. You want to talk about bad attitude? This man is all bad attitude. He's a big man, too. Big, angry man. With this three-way dance, the rules are different from the last one. You only got to pin one man to, to get that APWF belt currently held by Cicero. But it looks like Cicero and Brandy are making something of a, a partnership here. Yeah, it looks like they'll be tagging against him. Two on one, doesn't look good for Stevie. But then again, when it comes down to it, only one man can leave with that belt, so you gotta wonder, is Brandy gonna be so friendly towards the end? Brandy's gonna wanna get that pin, Cicero's gonna wanna get that pin. I think Brandy would turn on his mother if he had to, so I think at the end you'll see his true colors. Very good point. Stevie, word has it from the back. There is a phone call from Taz. Taz said that if we can finish what he started, he will make me new commissioner of ECW. <laughs> Where are you supposed the chances of that are? <laughs> I can't see that happen. Here we go. We got two guys. There we go. We figured this would happen. This is happening right now. Richard's in a lot of trouble right off the bat, getting beaten down. Kick. Th those ribs, he suffered the broken ribs, he suffered the punctured lung, and they are taking full advantage of it. That's what they're going after right now, choking him with his foot, everything. Well, they were the two men to do it, so they would know. Look at him, just holding him up for Brandy. I seriously doubt one referee is going to be enough to contain this one. They're pulling his pants down. Stevie's shorts do not look long for this world. Ah, that's a... Oh, insult to him. injury. Smacking him in the ass. If they're trying to make an ass out of Stevie Richards, they're doing a good job of it now. Richards trying to mount a comeback here. Not long-lived at all. Choking him some more. The referee completely ineffective. Now, Brandy's saying he's telling him his pants are down. He's going to try to fix his pants. He's pushing his head. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, you don't want to see this. Oh, man. We apologize, folks. I don't know how much referees are uh, getting paid. Oh, he's, he's using the, his leather shorts as a weapon. Oh, listen to that slap. Oh, right in the eye of Brandy. Oh, Stevie is hot. And I mean that in an angry sense. Yes. <laughs> Throws him over the top rope, and here comes Brandy along with him. Over the top rope. 
Stevie completely on the offense. You think the man would try and get a breather in there after the beating has been taken, but he is taking the fight to Cicero and Brandy on the outside. I don't know where he's taking him. He's taking him far away from the ring. He's got him near the concession stands now. He's... Can we get a camera over there? I thought he was dragging him to Kmart to buy him new shorts. Oh, he's got him on the table. Fighting him over in the concession area. Brandy now dragging Stevie back to the ring. Oh, oh. whipped into the apron. Oh, oh nice job. Solid. Heard, right through the ECW arena, you heard that. Oh, another one. It's Chop Fest 99. Here comes Cicero. They got a chair, Brandy's got a chair. He's holding him up. Oh, oh, right to the gut. Oh, and across the back. Richards is in trouble again. Now they're passing the chair back and forth to each other. Cicero taking a turn here. Got Stevie to his... Oh, huh. runs his head straight into the chair. Cicero looking pretty proud of himself at this point. He's a very happy man at the moment. And Stevie, his elbow is messed up right now. He's in a lot of pain right now. I don't know how he's going to come back against two men. Oh, draped across the top rope, brings him down. And then Brandy kicks him back out onto the cement. Not even his fans are going to help him right now for Stevie. The referee being very lenient with any kind of count out here. We're going to have a definitive winner. Stevie blocks and comes back with a hit of his own. He's got to take him to ring. It's the only way he's going to win. Oh, and there's Brandy waiting right for him. Second block. Connects. Well, he's got the family right in Brandy's face on that one. I'd be concerned they don't try and take the uh, the underwear as well. No. Going for the pin. One. Uh, oh. Dropped an elbow. On his own partner. <laughs> well, it seems like it's his partner now. Pretty well. Two on one yeah. on Richards. Richards favoring that elbow. Man, he looks like he's in a lot of pain. Uh oh, uh, a little argument here. Brandy and Cicero, now they're going to put their differences aside. They're going back after Richards. Nice reversal into the corner. Oh, oh. Stevie runs into two feet. Oh, presence of mind to bring him over for the slam. One, two, no good. Brandy pulls the ref out. And Brandy's got a chair in there now. Stevie better turn around. This is going to be very painful. Uh, he's setting up the chair in the middle of the ring. Who's Brandy? Brandy's trying to get Cicero's oh, attention. Reversal. Oh! Stevie face first into the chair. Brandy cocky as ever. Well, especially when it's two on one. Of course he's cocky. And still getting the crowd crazy. Still got the chair. With a very nice detonant at this point, yes. courtesy of Stevie Richards' face. Cicero getting him to his feet. He's going to whip him into the chair. Oh, nice reversal. Oh. oh, blocks him. He stops it. Oh, both men. Drop kicks him into the chair. Both men go down. Stevie, get, get in the chair. Stevie has got to mount some kind of comeback. Oh, cross the back of Tom Brandy. He's got to mount some kind of comeback if he wants to win this match. Stevie's still holding his elbow. And it was heavily padded to begin with, heavily wrapped. So it wasn't 100% at the top of the match. Oh! oh! Nice neck breaker by Brandy. Seems like it's only a matter of time right now for Stevie Richards in this one. They got the chair out again. They're going to pick him up. Oh, straight across the back. They're taking Stevie apart. Didn't get all of it, though. No follow-through as he let go of that chair. I think the referee's outside starting his car or something. He hasn't done anything in this match. No, no count-outs. He's letting the chair go. Here comes another chair. Oh! You can't take too many chairs to the back before you got to call it in for the night. Yeah, I've been married once. I know that feeling. Now Brandy picking his shot. Oh, 
Right. He doesn't, now he doesn't think he needs the chair anymore. No, at this point, he thinks that's easy pickings for Stevie. But again, you got to wonder which one of these guys is going to be the one to pin Stevie Richards and claim the APWF gold. Now they're talking it over. They're probably talking it over. They're giving Stevie too much time to recuperate here. They got to keep on top of him and just get it over with. They're just punishing him more and more in this one. Into the rope, going for the double clothesline. Oh. Gets it. Richard's down. And again, getting on the fans' case. Jimmy Cicero now. They should be trying to pin him right now, and they're, they're out talking to the fans of Philly. Brandy on top, hammering away. Oh, look at oh, this. You know, taking a little break in the corner. A cocky attitude is one thing, and, and you almost call it you know, a rookie mistake, but it's not. Cicero has been in this business for a while now. He's a veteran. He's the APWF champion. He should know better. Well, he looks like he's going for a nice little suplex here. Blocked by Stevie. Blocked again. Oh, Stevie with one of his own. And now Brandy can't believe it's uh, he's letting him get away with that. Brandy should stop trying to deal with Cicero and go for the pin and get the goal for himself. Oh, oh throw Stevie over the top. On, on, on his neck. That's got to be it. There's two guys. Oh, drop kick. Drop kick sends Stevie to the floor. No mats out there. And now they're going to talk to the audience again. Neither of them in a rush to end this one. They just want to punish him again. That's all they want to do. Put Stevie back in the hospital. Send a message to ECW and their fans. Gotta wonder what Shane Douglas is thinking backstage right now. He should come out and help his friend, maybe, you know? But then again, you know what? Maybe that was all a ruse at the top. Maybe he set him up. Maybe, maybe this set, was a setup you know? from the beginning. You don't know. He's not out here. His elbow's looking really bad. Oh, his elbow, he looks like he's protecting the ribs on his right side. Oh, look at this. Oh! oh! Three man. Belly to back, belly to back. Oh, see, here we go. Cicero didn't uh, want to make in the pin. Now Brandy uh, stops the pin. I, you, you knew this had to come. Yeah, we got two attitudes like that in the ring. Something's going to happen. Two huge egos. It works when they're trying to punish Stevie there, but when it comes time to get the belt, they're getting hot. And Stevie sneaking up on him. Um, Blocked. Oh! Double neck breaker on Double that. Double stunner for Brandy and Cicero. Stevie and coming back to life now. He's Got the trying crowd to. behind him, yep. But is it too late? I don't know very many men who can come back after that kind of beating from two men. Especially in his underwear. No. Especially in those cream-colored underwear. I know. He looks like he's naked in there. I know. Whoa! Letting him know exactly what he thinks of both men. Told him they're number one and kicked him in the goodies. Brandy might have had balls before, but not anymore after not that Not anymore. Kick. Richards going for it. Big power nice. bomb. Going for the pin. It's That's over. It. Stephen Richards has done it. He's beaten two men tonight. <laughs> Eliminated. Oh, excuse me. We are going with the rules. He has to eliminate Tom Brandy as well. I thought from the top that it was you only had to eliminate one man. What? Apparently, you have to eliminate both. Oh. oh! It's payback time for Stevie. Oh, Cicero, not too quick to get out of the ring. Yeah. Now, Brandy, Brandy go for the pay. This got to be it. No! Either way, APWF will have a new champion tonight as... Jimmy Cicero, their current champ, has been eliminated. Either Tom Brandy or Stevie Richards is, oh, is walking out of here as the new champion. Oh, uh, powerbomb! Where's the ref? Oh, completely out of position. I think the ref has a broken leg. He can't even get down. Totally out of position, and Brandy is able to kick out. I, uh, after the after the damage, his ribs and back are taken. I am shocked that Stevie was able to kick out of that. He does not want to lose to Brandy after what he's done to him. There's no way. Oh no! And these, I think these fans will tear this place apart yeah. if Brandy walks out of here with the gold. Brandy ducks underneath Stevie now. Oh, 
Oh, Stevie kick. kick! He nails him! This that has got to be it. it! That is all! Oh, this has got to feel good for Stevie. Especially doing it at the ECW Arena. No doubt. ECW Arena return gets revenge on the two men who put him in the hospital. He's got to feel good, but he is not in good shape right now. Oh, his elbow is killing him. His elbow, his ribs, everything's on him now. He is not in good shape. We have doctors standing by backstage for Richards. Looks like they're going to have to carry the belt out there for him because he ain't going to be able to hold it. Brandy's still feeling the effects of the Stevie kick. He is in loopy land right now. Maybe that'll shut Brandy's mouth for once. Oh, Stevie. Where are you setting him up? Uh, he's waiting for him. Thought he was going to go for a second kick there. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner and new Allied Powers Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Champion, Stevie Richards. Unbelievable match. Unbelievable action. There we go. Is that a sight or what? Yes, a man. Man in his skivvies holding the gold. Holding a belt in front of all these people. Uh -oh. Brandy throwing chairs in the ring now. Brandy upset. Brandy is not. He thought he had this match won from the beginning. Maybe Brandy thinks he works at the ECW arena now when he's uh, setting the chairs up for the next match. And some, some fan, oh, fans are bringing chairs yes. now. They can't be too happy. They got nowhere to sit now. Man, if he was bitter coming into this arena, Tom Brandy is twice as bitter leaving it. But the fans are happy he is leaving it, I'll tell you that. Stevie Richards may definitely need some medical attention going backstage. He's having trouble walking out of here. Oh, he's got his shorts back. See, that that's good that he has his pants back. I thought maybe some lucky fan was leaving with a nice souvenir tonight. But Stevie Richards leaving ECW Arena with the gold. I'd like to bring out uh, Julio Sanchez out here. He's a Latino brother. I'll tell you, this guy can fight and wrestle like no one I've ever seen. So I'm excited. I'm, I, I tell you, I'm actually even nervous to talk to the guy. Uh, I've heard so much about him from the times I've seen him on tape. Well, I don't know. This is just, this is just something else for me. Uh, Mr. Sanchez. Hey, how are you? Hi, Remy Artiago, man. Nice to I'm, meet you. I'm really, I, I can't tell you, I'm so psyched to, to even be in, you know, with you here. So <laughs> Cubo Carmichael is talking a lot of stuff. And, what was I know. he trying to say? I didn't get to hear a word he, he said. He's going to cause you a lot of pain, man. Oh, really? A lot of pain. Right? Cue ball, Carmichael. You're looking at the Latin dragon, Julio Sanchez, wrestling's greatest superstar, my friend. And you're going to find out firsthand what it's all about to be in the ring with the greatest professional wrestler who's ever walked the face of this earth. And I'm going to tie you up like a pretzel. I'm going to break your face. I'm going to slap you around the ring. And I'm going to take your manager and bend him over my knee and show him to be the little butt wipe he really is because wrestling's greatest superstar does not lay down for anybody. And I'm going to take you out. What else do you got to ask me? That's it, I'm man. getting fired no, 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 up right no. now, and I'm ready to tell you something else, cue ball, Carmichael. I'm going to take that little belt, the IPWA Heavyweight Championship. I'm the former light heavyweight champion. It's time to be the heavyweight champion, and anybody else that wants to step in the ring when I'm done with you, step up, because I'm ready, and I'm taking everybody out. Wrestling's greatest superstar, the Latin Dragon, Julio Sanchez. Thank you very much, Julio. Good Thank luck, you. man. Good luck. Well, you heard it. I, you know, I can't add anything to that. The man is a legend. I'm here with Cubo Carmichael is taking on the Latin Dragon, Julio Sanchez. I know Julio's talked a lot of stuff about taking you on, Cubo. What do you think? First things first, what I want to get out of the way is every stinking time I go to a wrestling show, it's the same question over and over again after the people see my performance in the ring. Cue ball Carmichael, how come we're not watching you on Monday night? Cue ball Carmichael, how come we're not watching you on the pay-per-view? The bottom line is because I'm a rogue, I'm a loose cannon. I don't care about victories, I care about hurting people. And I can tell you what, Julio Sanchez, your talk is cheap just like your mother, and tonight, I'm going to take you apart piece by piece, put you back together, and beat you down again. What do you think of that, pal? 
that's all right, man, Cue Ball. Mr. Cue Ball, that's fine, man. No. Uh, Cue Ball Carmichael's taking on Julio Sanchez. And, uh, uh, and I can promise you one thing. This up-and-coming superstar, Julio Sanchez, is about to fall and fall hard. This one's going to be hot. Yes, we got Cue Ball Carmichael and Julio Sanchez. Sanchez looks like he spent a lot of time in the gym and uh, cue ball looks like he spent a lot of time in the state pen yes well he's he's already put Julio in the in the uh, in the hospital before he's trying to do it again tonight There's no better place than the ECW arena to do that for the IPWA heavyweight championship our first contestant the challenger hails from Washington DC and tonight weighs in at 220 pounds ladies and gentlemen he is the Latin dragon Julio Sanchez has actually taken time off from the WWF. He was recently recruited. He's been shown on Monday Night Raw. You've seen him on Super Astros. He's actually taken time off to train and get ready for this match against Cuba. This is one of the really a big feud coming to a head here tonight at Break the Barrier. A lot of hate going on there. You could tell by the interviews earlier. And again, it's another classic. You got Julio, who can fly, who's a great technician. But you got Cuba, who's just out of his mind and very, very strong. Looks, cue ball looks like he just wants to beat you down. That's all he wants to do. Hailed from Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. And tonight weighs in at 252 pounds. Being led to the ring by Vinny Gambini. I give to you a former student of new fans. Cue ball, Carmichael! But Carmichael has so many weapons in his arsenal as well. You know, he's another guy. He can do that technically, but he enjoys inflicting the pain he enjoys beating you down and if he happens to win a title like he did you know in the IT IPWA in the midst of it good for him if not he doesn't care and plus he's got a guy on the outside with him gonna make it a lot harder for Sanchez to get the victory tonight well that's it you, you, Sanchez is gonna want to keep it in the ring keep Carmichael away from any chairs and keep away from that manager Sanchez is hot he's ready to go right now It's again, it's a classic old school versus new school mentality in this match. You're not going to see, a, you know, a whole lot of suplexes and flying moves from Carmichael. But then again, that could work against uh, Julio Sanchez. The only time I've seen him in the air was when he flew down for the match. That's about it. Again, you have two guys who know each other in the ring. It's not going to be a feeling out process. Julio going after the manager. Gambini right away getting involved in the match. And there you go, rookie mistake. Can't take your eyes off of a, a dangerous man like Cubo Carmichael for a second. Oh! Uh. Sanchez showing some fire early on. Walking right over Cubo. Nice drop kick off the top. But there you go, he is on top of him. He's staying on top of his man. No showboating, he's not trying to, to please the crowd. He's just on top of his man trying to do the damage and get that gold. Working on the arm. Can't perform power moves if you don't have that arm. Carmichael fighting back. Taking him to the ropes. Uh, he didn't need more than that to take the big man down. Oh, nice kick. He's going to have to keep Carmichael off his feet. Nice arm drag there. Very quick. It's like a cat, Sanchez. There you go. Carmichael heading to the outside. Very crafty. The veteran, knowing when it's time to bail, get that breather. He's controlling the match. He's controlling the tempo. Sanchez wants to keep this fast. He wants to stay on top of him. Carmichael slowing things down. He's going to play the mind games. Yeah, let him get a little words from uh, Gambini there. Help him out outside. Tell him what he's got to do. Or well, Gambini, hey, the man led him to a title. I think I think it wasn't for someone like Gambini, who is a, a class A manager. This guy would be just happy breaking bones. Forget you know the gold. Forget the titles. Oh, nice move. Drops the leg on the back of the neck coming in. Look at that. There you go. There's where your manager pays off. Gets the foot over the middle rope. Breaks the count. There he coming up. Gambino, he got caught. Sanchez caught him. 
too much time. Oh, uh, Carmichael almost hit his manager. Oh, oh, beautiful kick! Super kick to the back of the head. And Carmichael is down on the outside. You can't win a match, though, with the guy on the outside. You need him in that ring to pin him. And I think if he delivered that kick on the inside, if he kept him in the ring, this could have been it for Julio. And Sanchez got to get him in the ring. Go out there, get him in. Bring him in. It's giving him too much time out there to recover. Carmichael. Oh, here right. he goes. Over the top. Beautiful. Body. Flying through the air. Cross body over the top rope. Almost put him into the crowd. But again, how bright a move because you can't win that title on a count out. Carmichael spending a lot of time outside the ring. Sure, he he gets the can out. He may lose this match, but he walks away the champion, and Sanchez goes back to the WWF without that gold. He, does, he doesn't want the ref to count him out. Definitely wants to win it today in the ring. Oh, again! Nice drop kick from the second rope, using it as a springboard. A beautiful move, but you gotta wonder the strategy. Yeah. And Gambino back up. Oh, now he's, see, he's going after the manager on the outside. He should be worried about Carmichael. He should have been out there throwing Just Carmichael back in the ring. Oh! Cue ball out of nowhere with a clothesline outside. A beautiful setup. See, now he's got him where he wants him, outside, so he can beat on him. Sure, he got his breather. Now he's beaten down on Sanchez. He climbs right back in the ring now. Gambino, he's smacking him around. He'll toss him back in, it looks like. Sanchez, definitely the worst for wear there. Oh! Oh, it drops a knee on the back of the neck. All that weight behind it, you know, it's got to hurt. Trips him over the sucker up. Now, there you go. Leaving him for Gambini to do whatever he wants with him. He pulls the ref to the side. Distracts the referee. Another great reason to have a manager out there. Sanchez, oh, breaking the face. The tide has definitely turned here in favor for cue ball Carmichael. He's going after, he got oh, Gambini. Definitely got a piece of him. Crowd loves it. Well, Sanchez I... back on the apron. Oh! But Carmichael brings him back in the ring. Going for a pin. Breaks the count. Gets that shoulder up. Now he's just going to choke him. Carmichael's just going to choke him. He doesn't care how he wins or how he loses. Exactly. As long as he walks away with that gold, he has, he has all the advantages in the world. He's got that manager. He's got the gold on his side. And again, there you go. Gambini doing the job on the outside and a slap to boot. That was more like a love slap, and that's gonna just that's insult. Gonna, yeah. You know, Sanchez has that Latin blood. He gets pissed off enough, he's gonna make a mistake. Nice clothesline in the corner, sends Sanchez down. Cue ball should be all over him now. He is he is methodical in there right now. He's taking him apart piece by piece. Big shot. He's slapping him like his mama should have. There you go. Oh, but Sanchez. Oh, nice. Nice clothesline off the top. A wild clothesline. Carmichael didn't even see that coming. Oh, drink. Oh, a hot shot over the top rope. And Sanchez goes down. Carmichael, like I said, methodical. He pulls out the moves pretty much out of nowhere at will. Throws him into the rope. Sanchez grabs him. He's going for the backslide. Can he get him? He's got the big guy over. Uh, too much weight. The momentum carried him over. Ooh, shades of Owen Hart there, right in the head. And down goes cue ball. Oh, it definitely stunned him. Go for the pin. Here we go. One, two. Oh, oh, it doesn't get any closer than that. That was a slow count. Two and three quarters. If I were Sanchez, I'd be hot with that ref. Gambini trying to get his man back on his feet. And here comes cue ball. Oh, break through the eyes. Into the rope. Sanchez ducks under. Oh, oh, flying forearm. Beautiful. 
A cue ball back to his feet. Knee to the midsection. Can he get the big guy up? Yes, he oh, does. Oh, beautiful. Variation on a pump handle slam. Oh. And there's Gambini. Sanchez can count to 100. The crowd counting him out. Oh, Julio should be all over him right now. Julio should make sure he's keeping Carmichael down. Instead, he's Italy. going after the manager. A classic rookie mistake. And this is what they want. And here it goes. Oh, he blocks the foreign object. He's, he's using it. it himself. Oh, nails him. Knocked him out with that. He's out. Perhaps in place. One, two, three. That is it. Yes. Julio Sanchez. A Gambini in the room. He's taking that foreign object. Wait a he's second. He's got the object. Your new champion of the IPWA, ladies and gentlemen, Julio Sanchez. What's Gambini doing up there? Wait a second. He's slipping. I think he slipped the object into Sanchez's tights. Wait, wait, what? He's pointing it to the ref now. He's showing the ref. The ref oh, taking out his pants. Oh, he's, he's, oh. he's taking the title back, it looks like, because he hit him with a foreign object, he's saying. Oh, he's, the referee is reversing the decision. The IPWA title stays with Cue Ball Carmichael. Like we said at the top, having a manager there is a big, big plus. And it paid off for Cue Ball Carmichael at the end. Our next match comes from NWA New Jersey. It is a staple gun match. Hardcore rules apply. This is not for the squeamish, folks. The winner must get the staple gun from up here. Just like a typical ladder match. But they have to get the staple gun from the top. They're going to be hanging it from a rope or something. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Hardcore Nick Gaines. Hardcore Nick, you want to talk about a guy who will do anything and everything in that ring. Complete disregard for personal health and well-being. And he brought his own ladder with him. Well, when you're comfortable with a piece of machinery or a... <laughs> Bring it with you. That's all. But yes, instead of a belt being hung, that staple gun will be hung from the top. And tonight weighs in at 208 pounds. He is Justin Payne. Here comes Justice Payne, folks. Another guy completely willing to do whatever it takes to win a match. Oh, here we go. Oh, spinning kick. Nice takedown. Right off the top, these guys. Oh, line. They both go over the top. Oh, someone is going to the hospital after this one. He's given up a lot of weight, too, on this guy. He's got a chair right away. Oh, yeah. Oh! The hardcore title, brand new to NWA New Jersey. Tonight will be their first crown champion. And this looks like this is going to be a great one. Oh, two guys who, who are, are carrying on the tradition of hardcore from guys like Mick Foley, from guys like Abdullah the Butcher, from guys like Rick Link and Manny Fernandez. This is the next generation of hardcore wrestlers. And, man, they are making their mark tonight in ECW Arena. This match has started out on fire right from the beginning. He's all over him. Going to bring him to the ropes. Nice. Oh, oh beautiful move. Right for the knee. Take the knee out. Can't do much without one leg. Oh, he's really going for it now. He's trying to rip the knee right apart. Both these men from Combat Zone Wrestling representing the NWA New Jersey here tonight. Man. Nice move. Oh, Reaper. Oh. Beautiful. He went over for the DDT pulled out of that. And even though this is for the hardcore title, these guys, man, nope, pins are not allowed in this. You yeah. got to get that staple gun. Yeah. Even though these guys are, are fighting for a hardcore title, they are technically sound in there. Off the ropes. Oh, oh. nice. And again, he's going he, for the pin. You can't he, pin him. He has not learned yet. No. I think he's been hit with a staple gun one too many times. To my knowledge, this is the first staple gun match ever. Is it really? For my knowledge, we we actually had the rope hanging there uh, for a, a technical for a ladder match later on in the evening. These guys saw it, said we got a staple gun out in the car, so we got a match. 
Thank God he didn't have a chainsaw with him. That's all I'm thinking. It's amazing how much history has been made tonight. The headbangers back together for the last time. Shane Douglas, possibly his last appearance here. Stevie Richards back in ECW Arena. And now, the very first NWA New Jersey heavyweight title on the line. And they have Abdullah the Butcher somewhere in this uh, arena tonight. I'm trying to get a report right now where Abdullah is. Could very well pop out for this. You know, Abdullah smells the blood, and he will be out here. And I, I'm sure one of these guys are going to get busted open. Staple gun match? Somebody's, yes. Someone is going to be bleeding. Here we go, the first table of the night being pulled out. I'm surprised they have tables left at the ECW arena. He's setting it up. Justice Payne getting it in position. Now he's looking around for somebody he can put on there. But Cornick fighting back. Oh, thrown on the timekeeper's table. Oh! Cheer across the head. That laid him out flat on that table. He doesn't even want him on a table. He wants him off. Oh. Oh, a, a chair across the head looking to put a man in a serious amount of pain. Oh, wait a second. Uh, through the chair. Nice and shot. His head. From the ground, hit him in the head, he fell off. Using the chair as a shot foot. Now he's doing a little pound and throws him on the table. He's got the chair, set it up. Uh-oh. Justice Payne going for it. High risk maneuver over the top. Uh, oh! Nice leg drop over the top rope. Through the, through the table and onto the concrete floor. And the fans are chanting ECW in Philadelphia. I'm surprised they can even spell ECW out there, but <laughs> they'll chant it. Both men got to be feeling the effects of that move. They're just laid out out there. The ref just looking at them. Ain't much they're going to do unless they get down the stable gun. But no, no count outs here. But neither men trying to get that ladder in the ring just yet. Oh, nice frog splash. Again going the for the pin. <laughs> it has not sunk in. Pins don't count. Only staples tonight. Nice little reversal there. Comes off the rope. He's got him over his head. Look at the power nice on Nice show of power. Oh! That put some damage on the back right there. Big man like that. He goes for the... He's going for the pin too. Tries to throw Justice Payne out of the ring, but he comes back with a series of elbows. Reversal. Kick to the midsection. He's got him up. Big pile oh. driver. What? Another one he's going for. Oh, two it's two. He's going for another one. Oh, no. whoa. Spinning oh. power bomb. The fans are going wild now. This oh, you is got the kind a... of stuff they love here in Philadelphia. Oh, you got to pre. They're giving a standing ovation for that series of moves. Beautiful. I can't see him getting number after that. Gotta think it's time to go for that ladder, get the staple gun down. And just staple him right there to the mat. Let him stay there the rest of the show. <laughs> you know, it hasn't even sunk in. Staple gun. It hasn't... <laughs> Setting up the table now on the outside. Hardcore Nick's got just his paint up. Gonna run him into the turnbuckle. Throws him into the corner, he's coming up, misses the clothesline. Oh! oh, super kick to the chin, he's down. I think he knocked his goatee off him. Any one of these moves, most men would put them out. These two guys putting on a hardcore clinic like you can't imagine. This is what hardcore is all about. Gonna put him up on the top rope. What's he gonna do now? Putting him over. No way. Oh, slid missed that last rope. move there. Slid off the rope. That oh! Wasted too much time on Carm. By Hardcore Nick. Hardcore Nick taking full advantage of that slip. Powerbombed him through the table. Justice Payne. Boy. Justice I'll tell Payne you, is in pain right now. Oh, he's got to regret trying to set him up that last set of moves. 
Up, and now he's going for the ladder. Hardcore Nick has got the ladder and he's bringing it in the ring. He's going to be going for that staple gun. How high up do they got that thing? Look at the size of that ladder. Man, you can see up. it dangling up there. I personally do. Oh, wait a second. He took too long getting in the ring. Here comes Justin Payne. Nails him with the kendo stick across the head. Hardcore Nick is down. Both men down. Just as Payne gets to his feet. Oh, he's not going for the staple gun just yet. That dangerous, ladder. dangerous ladder laying there in the middle of the ring. DDT on the steel ladder. The action in this fight is unbelievable. It really, you're, you're wondering how far do they got to put the other man away before they're going to go for that, oh, stiff clothesline. How far are they going to put the other man away before they go for that staple gun? Looks like he's going up now. Taking his time. Or he's still feeling the effects of that power bomb through the table on the outside. Has to be. If that was me, I'd be taking an elevator up to get it after what he's been through. Oh, he's got Justice it. Payne's got it. He's got to get it off now. He's got to untie that rope. I hope a Boy Scout didn't tie that. He could be there for hours. Nice shank knot. Here he is. He's got, he's got it. it. Wait a second. He's calling the ref. He doesn't want the match to end. He doesn't want it to end. Oh, my God. Put a staple in him from the top of the ladder coming off. Justice Payne warning the ref. Not don't in this match or he's getting one, too. Hardcore Nick's got one. He's another oh. staple in the head. Another. Four staples in the head. He's going to have trouble going through the metal detector going home. Oh, no question about it. Oh, my God. You can see the staples in the side of his head. He's setting him up again for something here. Oh, he's got a chair. I would not have let that staple lay. Oh, because the staples might not have been that deep in the skull. I think he was just trying to put him in a little more. Oh! oh. Drops the leg over the throat with a chair there. Man, this match is personal. This could have been over when he grabbed that staple gun. But someone is going home on a gurney. I haven't seen this much hostility since my first divorce. Oh, this has got to be. This is just criminal, folks. Justice Payne Look now. He's going up the rope backwards. Oh. oh! Too much time. He's out of the way. I thought. I think he caught that staple gun face first, too. Uh-oh. Hardcore Nick's got the gun now. Payback time. Oh! In the side of the head. You know, I'll tell you, at least... At least the hardcore Nick, you can see where the staples are. With all that hair, they're going to have a tough time trying to pry those things out of Justice Payne's head. And they're taking it into the stands. Maybe they should staple some of these fans. The Could hell? happen. I, ECW Arena, you never know. I would, I would suggest they stay back. Can we get a camera over there? Trying to catch where the action is. They're heading towards the locker room area now. Hardcore Nick following Justice Payne. Justice Payne is climbing. Nick opened up an, another table. Right by the entranceway here. Justice Payne, he's climbing the 25-foot entranceway. The break the barrier entranceway. And now Hardcore Nick is going up. He's going after him. Yep, he's all the way on top there. We can see him. Nowhere to go. He's looking for Hardcore Nick. Justice Payne is grabbing him. He's at the top of the ladder now. He's helping him up. Both we men go. 25 oh. feet over the top. Both are... Oh! Short Payne goes down. Line. Short clothesline takes him down. Hardcore Nick, he knows he's got the table at the bottom there. Both men trying to trying to feel for the where the edge is. Uh -oh. oh! Hardcore Nick! 25 feet up through the table onto the concrete floor. Yes, you are the king of the world. Justice Payne. 
Oh, the crowd is going crazy here. This is what they love, ECW. They love violence. They love broken tables for some reason, but this is what they're getting. Gravity is not your friend from that high up, folks. We can see the medical technicians checking them out from the side. Justice Payne says this one isn't over yet. An unbelievable amount of punishment from both men. I can't believe they're both standing after this match. This is amazing. They're going to go back to the ring, it looks like now. How much more can Hardcore Nick possibly take? Staples to the head, that huge fall through a table. And now it, now Payne to the top rope with the chair. With the chair but it, Hardcore Nick gets it away from him. Ladder still in the ring. No real need for it. Have you? Do you even know where the staple gun is at this point? I have no idea where it is. I've lost track. Oh! oh suplex on a chair, chair from the top rope. That's it! Hardcore Nick, you're... He shouldn't have let him go. Hardcore Nick, the very first NWA New Jersey hardcore champion. That match would have been over when he got the staple gun if he wanted it to end, but he wanted to continue. Justice Payne, but man, how much more could you possibly do to this guy to put him away? And he couldn't do it. It's going to take him two days just to pull those staples out of his head. Hardcore Nick. Staples in the head and all. Your new NWA New Jersey hardcore champion. Unbelievable match. Both men should be applauded, though, putting forth that kind of effort. I don't think Justice Payne even knows where he is at this point. There's your new champion. But boy, the worst part about becoming the hardcore champion, you got to defend that belt now. I mean, what's the next match? What are they going to hang from the ceiling next time? Well, a little show of respect here, Justice Payne. Not too sure. There you go. Man, after that kind of punishment, after that kind of a match, for these two to still show respect for one another, that's saying something. And the fans appreciate it here in Philly. Well, they got to. Even in ECW Arena, to see a match like that, that's a marquee bout anywhere. Fans chanting, he's hardcore, he certainly is. Well, they could have been chanting, we are ugly, too, and it would have been the same, because they are. But I think he's hardcore is a little more appropriate, considering. Well, looking around the building at these people, I don't know about that. Unbelievable. Hardcore Nick walks away with the gold. Unbelievable. And tonight, weighing in at 530 pounds, they are Reno Riggins and Stephen Dunn, the Tennessee Vols! From Music City Wrestling, from Memphis, Tennessee, the Tennessee Volunteers. Want well, to talk about two veterans. No, really they know how to get the job done. Why are they volunteers? They're not getting paid for this? What are they, like volunteer firemen? I, I didn't name them. Ah, uh, well, I think they better change that. Tennessee professionals, are yes, you thinking? Yes, we're getting paid, so you know they got to be cash involved. But tonight, they are fighting one of the real up-and-coming tag teams in Music City, the Bad Street Boys. The titles aren't on the line. This is a tag team challenge match for number one contendership in the NWA. Fayetteville, North Carolina, and tonight weighing at 490 pounds. They are Christian York and Joey Matthews, the Bad Street Boys. York and Matthews, you cannot get on the internet, you cannot pick up a wrestling magazine without reading about these guys. They're young, they're hungry, and they're very, very talented. They're giving up a lot of size to the volunteers, definitely. They're giving up size, they're giving up experience, but man, they make up for that in hunger and dancing. Look at this. I haven't seen this good dancing since Dan Fever was taken off the air. Danny Terrio or? Dan and, the, and the girls were good. All right, yes. I was an Adrian Zemed fan myself. What an actor, come to think of it. Genius. What an actor. But getting back to the wrestling kids. Bad Street Boys, Matthews and York. Looking to really pull off an upset here. This would be a pretty big upset here. Volunteers have had those belts for a while now, and there you go. They're just beating on them. The boys wanting to play to the crowd. They're going to get beaten if you turn your backs on two guys like Dunn and Riggins. There you go. Experience right out of the ring, and they find they're in trouble. 
What's going on here? Oh. oh. We caught him, caught him, trying to cross the power. Body. Over the top. Takes them all out, all three of them. Including your own partner. Is that too smart a move? No, I'm sure he's a little mad about that. Let's see if Riggins and Dunn can regroup. Looks like they're both coming out there. Both of them kick under the ring. Baseball slide. And they are out. Throwing him back in the ring now. Matthews and York. All right, Matthews. Joey Matthews is going to start this match against Reno Riggins. Got him in the corner there. Reversal into the corner. Oh, it misses. See that? Didn't Matthews that. showing the speed and getting out of the ring, but Reno Riggins, the experience, follows up with the clothesline from behind. Now Stephen Dunn coming in the ring. See, this is what it's all about here. This is that's why they call it tag team. Double team him in the corner. Look at this. Oh. oh. Beautiful clothesline. It's gonna take him up. Oh. Nice takeover. Look at that. On his back. Ah, oh, two. He kicks out. The referee really letting these guys get away with a lot here. A lot of double teaming going on. Joey Matthews. The rope. Oh, oh, face to first. The face. Riggins and Dunn showing why they are the champions of MCW. To keep them away from the corner, can't make a tag. That's the way it goes. Classic strategy, but if it works, you keep with it. Nice shot to the bread basket. Got him down. Oh, there you go. How's your chin now? Stomping on the hands. They'll do anything to win. Whatever it takes. And, and another quick tag. Matthews hasn't had the chance to, to tag in York yet, and he's paying for it. Take him down with a headlock, just try to take all, everything out of him. That's it, you can't, you can't fly if you don't have the energy, and they are keeping Joey Matthews grounded here at this point in the match. Matthews needs a tag badly. Doesn't look like he's gonna get over from there. No, I'm surprised York actually hasn't jumped in the ring trying to break this up a little bit. It's the, uh, the experience of the... They don't have it. The lack of, yeah. yes. Oh, uh -huh. Lincoln's nice neck breaker. And another quick tag. Yeah. There you go. The continuity. Slides through the legs. Nice kick to the stomach. Oh, uh, Matthews down. Should have went for the tag immediately. Yeah, his, you see his neck snack on that? Mm -hmm. His neck went right back on that. It's got to be a lot of pain. Matthew should, shouldn't have gone for a move, should have went for that tag, and now another suplex. See, pull him away from the corner. Keep him out of his area. Keep him in your neighborhood. Here comes Riggins, now with the tag. Working on him in the corner now. They caught him trying to go over again. All right, here you go, Rio oh. Riggins. Going for the pen. One, two. Oh. Nice bridge out. Oh! Nice move. Surprised he had the power to do that at this point. He's got to make the tag. He's got to get out of there now. Absolutely. You get the feeling that, that Riggins and Dunn have really scouted these men very well. They know their moves, and they know each other's moves, even more importantly. They know when they need to get that tag. So they're both up. They're both going to go. No. No, Riggins and... lost, and here comes York. York cleaning house. He's on fire. Nice slam there. He's going to slam. Oh, not going to slam. Reverse. Big, the big man down on his back. Belly to back suplex paying off. Now Matthews and York with a little double teaming of their own. Oh, what a move. 
They're showing some good tag team action right now, having to work together. The Two beautiful moves. He's Where's got Riggins ref? down. The ref completely out of position. The two he should be on the two legal men in the ring, and he's not. Then again, at this time, York should be again beating on Riggins, making sure he's down, not giving him a chance to recoup. Here comes Stephen Dunn with the chair. Dunn's got the chair just waiting. Through the chair. That's got to do it. Rio Riggins rolls him over for the pin. One, two, three. That is all. See, that's what experience does in wrestling. Right there. Tennessee Volunteers, your winners, showing why they are Music City champions. Taking the new guys to school. And it looks like they dropped out of school. They're still laying back there. WWO is here tonight at Break the Barrier, and it's going to be Natron Steel versus Scab. And I'm going to take a look for the. Oh, there he is, right here. Hey, Natron, can you come over here? I know you're taking on uh, Scab tonight, and that's going to be a pretty amazing event. Uh, do you have anything to say about that? Well, I'll talk about Scab in just a second there, Peon. First, I'd like to talk about James Thurston. Thurston, you walked out on me and the company. Now I'm the boss. That's why you're sitting at home in North Carolina wishing you were here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Thurston's not here tonight? He's not here tonight. I'm the leader of the company. I'm in charge. What I say goes, I say this belt's staying with me. I'm going to break Scab in half. Hey, Scab. Scab, can you come over here, buddy? How's it going? Hey, how's it going? Uh, Natron Steel was talking a lot of shit tonight, you know, about he didn't even want to talk about you, man. He said he's in charge tonight, that he's the president. Well, uh, basically, I'm not sure what's going on with Thurston and Natron and Roger Kerr or anybody. I'm here to worry about me, and I'm here about worrying to get my belt back. I'm two-time WWO champion. I beat him in the first ladder match, and I plan on beating him again tonight. All right, great. Thanks a lot, Skip. Wrestling organization, and it's a ladder match for the heavyweight title of the WWO. Our first contestant hails from Seattle, Washington, and tonight is weighing in at 211 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Scab! Here comes Scab to the ring. Challenger here tonight, but no stranger to that WWO title. Twice he's held it around his waist. He has had a feud like you can't believe with Natron Steel the past couple of years. I'm looking forward to this match. The last match, ladder match was very good, but I, I think this one's going to be even better. Oh, it's the last ladder match these two had was the 1998 WWO match of the year, and they plan on topping it here tonight in Philly. And his opponent is being led to the ring by Roger Kerr. He hails from Pittsburgh, PA, and is weighing in tonight at 227 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Natron Steel! Here comes Steel to the ring. Very confident. Not only does he have the manager there with him, not only is he champion, he is also right now the acting president of the WWO since James Thurston stepped down a few months ago. Uh, got a lot going for him, but it, it could also come back to hurt him if he thinks he's just going to walk in here and take this title without any effort. I think it's going to be a great match. Uh, I don't know who's going to win this. But if you had to, what? which guy? Who are you looking to win? Well, uh, knowing me, I'd just have to, I'd have to pick Scab. You set me up. I had to All say right. Sorry. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? yeah. Let's see. There is no love lost between these two guys. It's been going back and forth for months. An unbelievable cage match a couple months ago. And like I said, they've already had one ladder match. They're doing it again here tonight. The fans voted for it online. There we go. 
Oh, nice clothesline by Scab, taking him down. Very strong. He's going after Roger Kerr. No, he's going after the ladder already. This is too early for the ladder. Steal all over him outside. He's going to throw him back in. He can't go for the ladder that early. No, no, Natron's going after it. Oh, and he pays for it. Scab. Drop kicks, kicks him through the, the middle rope onto the ground. Oh, that had to hurt. Now Scab beating on him on the outside. The ladder in use. Place the ladder on him, and he's going to hit him with a chip. Oh, oh, man. Three shots. I ain't paying for that chair, by the way. And he placed the chair on top of the ladder, and he's coming up. Oh, oh. big elbow. I think that's the only ladder we have here tonight. If they, if they damage that, neither man will be able to get to that belt hanging over the ring. Steele is laying out out there. He's, he's knocked out by Steele. And now he's setting, setting, up, it up. setting up that ladder in the middle of the ring. I think he's going to go for the belt, try and get a quick win here tonight while Natron is outside and disoriented. Natron now getting back in the ring. the back off the ladder. Unbelievable move there. And now Natron's gonna go up, looks like. Come on. Natron climbing up to the top. Looking down there. Scab got him, but he boots to the face. face. Keeps him away. Another boot to the face. And now oh nice drop kick. Drop kick off the ladder. Right to the back of the head. Scab is down. Taking on the ladder. What's he doing with the ladder? Oh, the wheels are turning. And Natron setting the ladder up between the ropes here. He's got something in mind, and it ain't gonna be pretty. That's for sure. Working over Scab in the corner. Oh, caught him in the mouth. And again. Oh, Scab has had enough of that. Nice chop. Solid across the chest. Reversal. Oh, another. He stops it. Another reversal. Oh, hard clothesline. Nowhere to go. ECW Arena counting along with the shots to the head. Thank God they can count to 10 so they know when to stop. <laughs> Thank God they didn't have to go any higher. They'd have to take their shoes off. That were the case. But here we go. Trying to, trying to whip him into the ladder now. A oh, poke to the eyes. There goes Scab into oh. the ladder. There goes your back, huh? No doubt. Here comes Natron Steel following it up. Oh! Oh, caught the corner of the ladder right on his back. They're both out of it right now. That pretty much would have been the end for, for Scab if, uh, if he was caught in that last move. He's grabbing the ladder. Uh, he throws it on him. Oh. Throws it over the top rope onto Steele. Roger Kerr going over to see how his man's doing. Now scab to the outside. Oh, here's Kerr. Kerr getting involved. Again, the benefits of having a manager. He's looking out for his man. Getting a couple shots in there, and the ref is allowing it. Scab at a serious disadvantage. Still coming back into the ring. Goes for the shoulder block, missed. Oh! Unbelievable. Man. Nasty sunset flip over the top rope onto the ladder. I've never seen that done outside the ring like that. I mean, it's bad enough that there's no match out there, but right on top of the steel ladder. That's got it. Oh, here we go. Going underneath the ring. Pulling out the table. Another table. Someone's going to have to do some furniture shopping for the arena tomorrow. They're going to have to cancel the bingo game tomorrow <laughs> night there. Look yeah, at that, and the little ladies going to be sitting on the floor with their bingo cards. And Scab's doing some interior decorating there. Why is he putting the ring back together? I don't know, taking a long time. Meanwhile, Natron's still setting up the ladder. 
you got to keep your eye on your opponent. You could be out there setting up this table. Meanwhile, Steele could be climbing up that ladder, grabbing the belt, and this one would be over. Yep. Good coming in now. He's got, got a chair. A chair yeah. oh, oh, solid across the back. Steele is tangled up in the ladder. He's got the chair again. No, throws it out outside the ring now. Solid shot across the back by Scab. Oh, you can hear that. Clear across Philly. Now off the rope, Scab. Oh, I thought he was going to the table for sure there. Nice block into the corner. Scab's going up to the top rope. Oh, he got caught. That time, both Kerr and Natron Steel knocking on the ropes. What's this from the top rope? Oh, looks like a neck breaker from the top. Oh, oh, nasty move. Call the chiropractor, baby. Call the chiropractor. Call Quincy. <laughs> Thinking a regular match, this one would be over by now. Not at, not at the ECW arena, no way. No, they still got to climb that ladder to get to that belt. Now he's setting him up in the corner. Look at, him, look at him holding him in the corner. The manager's holding him there. Meanwhile, Natron Steele. Oh, he's setting the ladder on top of him. On top of Scab in the corner. Oh, this is not going to be pretty. He's going off the turnbuckle. Scab, nowhere to go. Oh, oh man. Smash into the ladder. Into Scab. Scab is down. I, I can't picture him continuing after a move like that. Scab is really going to have to try to pick himself up on this one. I don't know. I don't know if you can. I don't know if anyone could at this point. He's back to his feet. Unbelievable. I think he might be busted open. He looks like he might be busted open. He don't know where he is. No, and here comes another table. Another with table. The first table still isn't broken yet. He's setting this one up right next to it. Right in front of it now. Scab trying to mount any kind of offense. Oh, and takes a baseball table. Still up on both tables. Camp going up into the ring. Natron could be looking for a. Oh yeah. Now he's gonna do a flip on him. He's telling the people off the rope. Oh, oh, Roger Carr right there, looking out for his man. That could have been done, right? That could have been over. That could have been over if he got that. Now he's chasing the manager. Oh, he never. Oh. See? You gotta concentrate on your man. You gotta concentrate on your point. Wait a second. That's James Thurston. And he's, he went against Steele. First and nail Steele and Kerr. The former president out of nowhere. What the hell's going on here? He isn't supposed to be here tonight. I heard he was not even in the arena. Now Scab trying to take advantage. Sets the, sets the ladder up in the corner. He's going after Natron, but the damage has already been done by James Thurston out of nowhere. Unbelievable. Into the ladder. Oh. What the hell? What the hell's Kerr doing outside the ring now? Set up some chairs. Set up chairs on top of the, top of the table. Oh, flip it to the ladder. We want Kerr to have two two chairs and a ton of thumb tacks. There's a thumb tax on the table out there. And another chair. He's got another chair. Three chairs, Three chairs two tables, and a, and a bag full of thumb tacks now on the outside. And a partridge in a pear tree. Oh, I don't want to be on the receiving end of that. Four chairs. Four chairs now. Here it is. I think he's going for it now. Neutron. Oh! Skip whips him into the ropes for reversal. This is the clothesline. Oh, rushing leg sweep onto the ladder. Both men down. Both men down. How are they getting up from it? I have no idea, but I, I don't even know if they are aware of what is sitting outside the ring waiting for them. I wouldn't want to be either man going through that. Yeah, it looks like he's going up the ladder. Going for that belt. It's a, it's a race against each man, and, and, and neither man wants any part of that. Two tables, a, a bag full of thumbtacks, and four chairs. Now, Natron. Oh! Man. He power bombs him from the, top, the middle of the ladder. The middle of the ladder. Unbelievable. 
and he's still moving. Trying to get up from that. I don't know. I have no idea how either man is, is, is moving at this point. But Scavage has taken so much damage. Now it looks like they're both going up the ladder. The, at the same time, they're both going up. It's a race to the top for that belt for the WWO heavyweight title. Both men looking. Steele did the punch to the head. Another punch to the head. Scab blocks it, catches him. Two. A third. And down. They try Steele. With two tables, four chairs, thumbtacks, and a partner to the pear tray. Oh, Roger Curry's checking on his man. Meanwhile, Scab is up there. He's got the belt. All he's got to do is unhook it. And he is the new WWO champion. He does it. It's over. He does it, ladies and gentlemen. And new WWO heavyweight champion, Scab! Unbelievable! Scab does it! We gotta get some medical attention out here for Natron Steel after going through those tables. Oh, he is not moving. We gotta get a wood chipper out here. Look at all the wood all over the place. He is not moving, folks. Roger Kerr checking on his man. He is not getting up after that. But Scab, once again, your new WWO heavyweight champion. Unbelievable, Matt. Unbelievable. We are redefining hardcore here tonight in Philly. I haven't seen something this hardcore since the Tommy Lee, Pamela Lee movie. There you go. And the crowd is on their feet. They are loving this. They are absolutely loving this. I'm here with the World Legion Heavyweight Champion, The Prince. Is this your first time on TV? Yeah. First of all, if Harley Race had anything to do with it, I'll find out. And I will put that cotton-haired old man in the ground once and for all. Now, Steve Sharp, I've beaten you all over the country. I'm going to beat you all over India. I'm going to beat you all over Singapore. So if you want to be beaten in Philadelphia, that's just fine with me. And if you want to put people around the ring, you want to put, give me a strap, you want to do whatever you want to do, you're going to face my wrath because I have seen the light. Not like this light that's shining in my eyes right now. I've seen the divine light of Allah. First of all, Derek Stone, you can Alibaba this, you can Alibaba that, but I'm going to bend you over, boy, and put my foot up your crack. I want you to know that. Let me tell you how this is going to go down, son. You're going to come to the ring. We're at the ECW Arena, right? Yeah, that's right. You're going to come to the ring, and I'm going to give you an Alibaba extreme ass kicking. WLW heavyweight title. Our first contestant hails from the Middle East, and tonight is weighing in at 245 pounds. He is the Prince Derek Stone. Prince Derek Stone. Used to be Dynamite Derek Stone. Influenced by new manager, The Sheik. Let down a lot of people. The guy was a big fan favorite out in the, in the area. You might say he got brainwashed. And now look at him. But to tell you, though, can't take anything away from him. He is a talent in that ring. What are we doing now? Oh, no. Oh, he's praying. He has his ritual. This is his pre-match ritual. That's embarrassing. He shouldn't do that in front of me. I know I'm bigger than he is in any, any entertainment. I don't, think he's, I don't think he's praying to you, Bob. Are you sure? Well, he's looking right at me. He is a big man. He's a dangerous man. But I'll tell you something. His opponent tonight, Atomic Dog Steve Shock, might just be bigger and more dangerous. He's a very big man. The nephew of Junkyard Dog, the late, great Junkyard Dog, here tonight to prove something to his fans, to prove something to America, and take that gold back at the ECW Arena. Here we go. First of all, I don't recall telling any of you degenerates to play any of that crappy music when I came out. Somebody's cranky tonight. You get that feeling. Yes. Second of all, I have had it up to here with the conduct of you degenerates. They are degenerates. He is right well, about that. 
for the rest of the night. I want you all to sit there, be quiet, refrain from all the profanity. If I was the ref, I'd be checking under that robe for weapons right about now. Or maybe even a Slurpee. I don't know what he's got under there. This is the exact reason right here why I claim that my country turned its back on decent... There you go. The future of America right there. Look at them. Men like myself. At the very least, he doesn't have his manager here with him tonight. Who many feels responsible for getting him that belt. Not that he couldn't do it on his own. He's a talented, talented man. Well, let's see if he can keep it tonight. We can get a piece of paper, and we can get a pen, and we can start it, and you can be number one, you can be number two, and I'll kick every single one of your asses right now. Now, he didn't want profanity from the fans, but if he can use it, definitely not endearing himself to Philly. So, Harley Race, this is another setup from you. I do not want to defend this belt in front of these degenerates, but I will because you are going to taste the medicine that you need. You are going to see a real champion in this ring and all over this arena tonight show you what the Middle East has always known, that our athletes are the best, that we are the greatest, Of course, referring to WLW Commissioner Harley Race, the great Harley Ladies Race, the set in this match. For me that this will be a Texas death match where falls count anywhere, and the opponent must answer a 30 count to the ring. So, so Prince's opponent tonight from the Dog Pound USA, weighing in at 280 pounds. He is the nephew of wrestling legend Junkyard Dog. The Atomic Dog, Steve Here's another guy, a lot of people saying big things, big future for Steve Sharp. Look at the size of him, too. Oh, he's a huge, huge man. And he knows how to move. He knows what he's doing in that ring. Play a matter of time so you see him headlining on Monday nights. I don't want this dog barking up my tree, I'll tell you that right now. Certainly not. I think the Middle East is going down tonight. Derek Stone is in for a world of hurt. Just announced in a Texas death match. Initially, this was supposed to be a steel cage match. Um, the cage was damaged. We still don't know who did it. But it was someone within the organization, someone backstage damaging the, the cage. I don't want to point fingers, but that man right there could very well be responsible. I think you're right about that. But the stipulations being changed in this one. But whether it's contained in a cage or a Texas death match, doesn't matter. And the fans here paying tribute to the late Junkyard Dog. He was a great wrestler, great entertainer out there. Oh, absolutely. And the lineage continues right here with the Atomic Dog, Steve Sharp. The bell, this one's underway. The dog is all over him. Oh, back body drop, nice. Nice clothesline over the top row. There you go. He almost landed in the Middle East. Oh! Cross body over the top row. Oh, a man of that size to even think of trying to move look like that. Look at the tongue on that man. Oh, my God. He can lick every stamp in the post office. Did you see that? Oh, God. Even his tongue muscles are massive. Oh, oh it's in a steel step. And back into the ring. He's taking no chances. He wants that belt here tonight. Climbing to the top. Dog is going up. What's he going to do here? Oh, nice drop kick off the top rope. Heavyweight using some cruiserweight type moves. Unbelievable for a man that size. You got to be impressed. He's going to higher grounds now. He's out. He's going back. Derek Stone heading towards the concession stand now. Can you get me a hot dog while you're there? Falls count anywhere, so there is no count out. Here comes the atomic dog now. 
Oh, nice clothesline outside the ring onto the cement floor. Oh, into the table. Oh, hits him in the head. What is that, mustard? It's the mustard. Oh, he's oh, afraid man. of mustard. He's going to just piss the dog off by doing that. Oh, double axe handle from the table. Mustard all over the back of his head. That is not going to make the dog happy. Not at all. Now Derek Stone dragging him back to the ring. Oh, into the apron. No pinfalls attempted, yet both men want to wear each other down. Oh, nice reversal. Oh, oh, into the post. And now, oh, to the cement floor. Oh, man, pedigreed him into the cement floor. Atomic Dog going for the one, two, three. Did he get it? No, he has to answer to a 30 count back in the ring. Oh, wow. That should be it on the cement floor. Dog now climbing back in the ring. I don't see the Sheik. I don't see Derek Stone. Oh. Wobbling around outside the ring. Oh, he has no idea where he is, but he's climbing under the bottom rope now. He has answered the 30 count. <laughs> Dog throws him into the corner. Oh, big butt bump into the corner. I have no idea how Stone is even standing at this point. Stone goes to the other corner now. Here comes the dog. Oh, he misses. The dog is in trouble right now. Oh, definitely. The momentum has swung by way of Stone now. Trying to kick him. Yes, he gets Stone him out of the ring. Out of the ring. He's going to go outside with him right now. And now he's, he's waiting. Measures him beautifully. Going for, he's going for the steps, the metal steps. Drops him on the dog's back. One, well, wait a sec. I think I could swear I just saw Abdullah backstage here. I, I think... I have no idea. We haven't seen him out yet. Well, he better not come near me. I don't want to see that guy. No, I'll tell you, most, most of these guys out here, most of the workers here tonight were terrified when they heard Abdullah was here. But no one knows why. Oh! Big show of power there by Derek Stone. Yeah, he got the big man up and down very quickly. Now he's going to go. What's he doing? He's going for the pin. Ah, uh, he ain't going to pin him like that. You got to get on top. Atomic Dog able to leverage his way out of that. The dog on the ground. Camel clutch. He's going for the camel clutch. Can he get it? Look at the muscles on his neck. He ain't going to stop with that. No, he's going to have to work on the back a lot more before a move like that's going to be effective. The dog fighting back. Shades of his uncle. Some other got him up for the suplex. Wow. Him up there. Oh, beautiful. Going for the pin. Come on, ref. Completely out of position, but I only got the one count. He's Derek Stone. The dog out. Throws him to the outside now. I mean, this is where it really gets dangerous. Going into his pants. He was going in for something there. Going for the tights for an object, perhaps. Oh, yeah, you can see it right there. Handcuffs. He's got a pair of handcuffs. I think he knocked him out with those. There you go. He got the three count. Now he has to answer to the 30. But he's got those handcuffs there. And this match just as legal as a headlock. What's he going to do with those now? 
Now he's, he's planning something. The dog's trying to get to his feet. Well, if he can handcuff him to the outside, he won't be able to get back into the ring for the 30 count. Oh, he misses. misses. Oh, right to the back of the head. Two. And you're looking at a future cauliflower ear right there. Grinding his face into the floor. Where'd the handcuffs go? Wait a minute. Wait, he's... He slapped him on the dog. Atomic Dog, he's got the cuffs on the dog now. It looks like he tied up the dog outside. Well, he's, no, they're not cuffed. Wait, he's got one of the photographers now on the outside there. Who's this guy? He's terrified. He doesn't want to be involved oh, in this. Wait a second. I, I, I can't see his face, I think. Yeah, that, that's Carl Hancock from iWrestling.com. He's got him. Oh! Just a kid. He's, he's, he's not a wrestler. He's handcuffed to the Atomic Dog. Atomic Dog has to get back in the ring to answer to the 30 count. But he is handcuffed to Hancock on the outside there. And he's out of it. He can't even get up. No, he has knocked him out. He is not even moving. He's The dog's picking him up, dragging him. Throwing him back in the ring. That's it. He didn't make it back. Did he make it back in time? I can't tell. I can't get a call from the referee here. He's got him on his back. The dog's got him oh! out. <laughs> he uses Carl as a weapon. Yeah, he drops him off. Oh! He goes for the pin. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Use it. An 80-pound camera guy. <laughs> Is that the you can use a photographer as a weapon in such a match? That's it. He pinned him in the ring. You've got your winner. The dog won and look. He's racing Carl's hand. And it looks like he's taking a cameraman home with him because we got the key. That well, man's got the key right there, I believe. He did pin him on top of him, so who's the champion? No contest. No contest. Illegal interference. He... he had to drag someone else to beat him. It's not like he was a wrestler. Two on one. Two on one. Two on one, he teams want to hand cup to Doogie Howser to him. What's he going to do? Oh, that is unbelievable. And, and dog, dog ain't happy. Oh, Dog is not happy at all. God bless America. Oh. <laughs> unbelievable. That is not cool. So Derek Stone walking out with the gold. I'm laughing about it. And does Atomic Dog get to keep... Oh. No! Oh, no. Carl Hancock from iWrestling. He didn't ask for any of this. <laughs> I hope he doesn't have a picture of that. He gets a beating from both Derek Stone and from Atomic Dog. He cost Steve Sharp this match to no fault of his own, though. Now he's getting uncuffed here. He's cupping his him. hand behind his back. Oh, and a boot to the butt. To, oh, God. We big and strong. Ain't no good guys, ain't no bad guys up in this arena. This is the ECW arena. That means I'm going to fuck you up and him too for getting in the way. So Atomic Dog leaving here. No strap, no gold. Carl Hancock not leaving with any photos, but a ton of bruises to and show a, for his effort. And a foot in his ass. I'm here right next to the stretcher, and I'm telling you, somebody's going to be brought out on it and break the barrier. That's what I hear. And I'll tell you something else, guys. I've seen these wrestlers, and I saw Max Justice backstage. I'm going to try to get a hold of him. I don't know if I can. I don't know if he's going to even give me the time of day. But I'll tell you, if anybody can put somebody on this stretcher tonight, it could be Max Justice. I'm here with Max Justice and Paulie B, his manager. He's taking on Boyce Legrandi tonight, and right behind us is a stretcher. 
Um, and I hear that Max thinks he can put voice on that stretcher. What do you say, Max? Well, let me tell you this for one thing. You just shut your mouth. This is my interview. You just back up and listen. Listen, my name is Max Justice. I'm the APW champion. I flew all the way out here from California to kick Boyce Legrand's ass like I did before, and I'll do it again. Listen, I'm the man in APW, and soon I will be the man in the ECW arena breaking down the barrier. I couldn't bring my manager Shane Dynasty with me, so I went out and got the best manager that I could find on the East Coast, and that's my buddy here, Paulie B. Thanks. And I'm going to turn it over to you right now. You, you, tell, you do me justice, baby. Max Justice did not fly all the way from California for nothing. Max, I am not responsible for his actions. You understand what I'm saying? He will not only break the barrier, he's going to break his neck. And you better be ready for that here tonight at the ECW Arena. You better be ready. That's right, brother. Give him a mic. Let's get out. Well, uh, you heard it, guys. Max Justice says he's going to put Boyce right there on that stretcher. Remains to be seen if he can pull it off. Max Justice said he was going to put Boyce Lagrandi right here on this stretch. I heard it myself. Hey, Boyce, Boyce can come in here. Hey, Max is talking a lot of shit, man, about putting you on this stretcher. Yeah, that's all he's doing. He's just blowing smoke out of his nose. I mean, this stretcher, come on. I'm not going on this stretcher. I didn't come way out here to be put on a stretcher. I came out here to take home the APW strap. That's what I plan to do when it's all said and done. Okay, Boyce, I appreciate the time. Uh, you know, I know you're a man of uh, your word. You know, you don't talk no shit, you just do your action in there in the ring, right? That's where it's all done at. Okay, well, you heard it from Boyce. Our next match comes from All Pro Wrestling in San Francisco, California. It is for the APW Heavyweight Champion. Now, this is something of a surprise. Our first contestant is from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and tonight is weighing in at 210 pounds. Here's the bad boy. Boyce Legrand looking to get the APW title tonight. He's another one, great size, and a really, really talented high flyer. And he's going to need that tonight against uh, Max Justice. Oh, Ju Justice is a giant. Yes. And now he's got the other, the other manager, Paulie B. Paulie well, B. in the back, nothing but a troublemaker, giving me stuff in the back. Paulie B. Known to fans on Scoop Central as Paul Bond from Out Loud. Suddenly tonight, managing Max Ju Max Justice is huge. He Have is. you seen the and size of him yeah. up close? I've seen him in the men's room. He's huge. He's being led to the ring by Paul E. B. He hails from St. Louis, Missouri. And tonight is weighing in at 295 pounds. He is Max Justice. Look at Justice, he is just a big man, and you can't believe the power of this man. I have seen earlier matches between him and Legrand. I hope Legrand's done his homework, because he is not going to want to get caught. Uh, there we go, right away on top. Cardinal mistake right there. Takes him into the ropes. Oh! Monster clothesline. Lucky he didn't take his head off right there. I expect to see dreadlocks in the parking lot after that move. And here we go again. Oh, man, you don't usually see a big man use that kind of move. No, he had to get airport clearance to get up that high. That was insane. Man. Right off the bat, and if Legrand does not mount any kind of offense here soon, this is going to be over quickly. Oh, with authority. Lips him up like he's nothing. Unbelievable. Now he's going outside the ring. So you got uh, there's Paulie B giving him a chair. Get in the chair. The referee isn't letting him get away with it, though. That's it. He's got the chair now. He's wasting a lot of time out there. Crowd chanting for him to hit the ref. Wait, Legrand. Oh! oh! Takes down both men. Picks up the spear with that one. The 8-10 split, baby. And now Legrand up, up the ropes. Over the top. Oh! Wow, Air Legrand. There's a lucky fan. Going home with a manager. <laughs> and they're hearing it, Legrand. This is what Legrand has got to do. Keep him off balance, keep him off his feet, but get him in that ring. Oh, oh! and again. 
He's got to get justice back in that ring if he wants to go home with the gold. This is not false count anywhere. He needs to get him in the ring. He's calling for him to come in. Now both Justice and Paulie B back to their feet. Paulie B, a couple of words of wisdom now for his man. Justice is just so big though. Nice drop down. Oh, oh it runs right into the clothesline. Man, oh man. Just so big and powerful. And unlike other big men we've talked about here tonight, he's not really methodical. You don't know where he's going to hit you next. You don't know what movie he's going to come up with. And he is fast on his feet. He just wants to beat you senseless. Here we go. Oh. Oh, nice shoulder block. Knocks him right down. So many ways he can hurt you. Oh, nice leapfrog. Oh, he's... Oh, man. Oh, Karana. He got the big man over with that. Unbelievable. He goes right back to work on him with some big forearms to the face. Uh-oh. He might have got caught there. He absolutely did. Yeah. Justice adjusting him. Oh! That could be all. That could be all. Here we go. Here's the wrap. One, One two. two. No! He pulled him up. Justice is not done with Legrand just yet. He could have pinned him right there. The referee warning him. Justice has him over the top rope. There's Paul E.B. right over there in his face. Oh, he, he is talking him. Oh, he slaps him across the face. Right in the eye, right in the eye there. Paul E.B. showing some guts. He just better hope LeGrand doesn't come back to, to pay for that. Oh, here we go. Curtain call. Oh. He's not focusing in on one body part. He is hurting LeGrand as a whole, just his back, his face, his head. Now he's got him a torture rack. He's trying to break him in half. He can do it too. No effort at all to get him up there. Spin him around. Oh, oh man, into a neck breaker. Unbelievable. Beautiful, move. beautiful move by Max Justice. He's got it here. It's over. This is it. One, two. And he picks him up again. He doesn't want it. Unbelievable. Paul E.B. telling him from outside the ring not Punish to him end more. it. Punish him more, he's saying. Bad boy Boyce LeGrand going for the ride. Whoa! Great agility. Oh, but the power. Big man up. No way. No, the power of Max Justice is just unbelievable. Oh, oh by the ears. Oh, my God. The crowd respecting what they're seeing here right now. Because they're from Philly, they love violence. They love people getting their ears ripped off. Oh, that. Max Justice not resorting to weapons, just sheer brute force there in the ring. Backing him in the corner once again. Whips him to the far side. Off the top, crossbody, going for the pin. No. Max Justice. Wait a second, Paulie B got knocked off the top. Uh, oh! He knocks Paulie B off the apron, follows it up over the top, and, and Paulie is in the second row. And he deserved it more than anyone I've seen tonight. Oh! Oh, man! Oh! Unbelievable. Max Justice has... He's got him here. Is he going to go for it, Pin? Apparently not. He's going to punch him for what he's done to his manager. He wants to torture him. He knocked the last hair off Paul E.B.'s head. Justice with a solid right to the jaw. He is just hurting him in so many ways. Paul E.B. finally gets to his feet. Trying to go to the top and get... Oh! Goes to the well again. And Justice was ready for him. What are we going to see here? Belly to back suplex off top rope? No, he's... Justice going up top. The he's, big man. I, I, you don't see big men climb to the top rope this often. What's he going for here? He's got a choke slam. He's got him set up for a choke the slam. The top rope! Top. Oh! Unbelievable impact. This has got to be it. One, two, three. That it's is over. it. Paulie B's in there with his man. 
Still the APW heavyweight champion. Look, oh, I can't see him losing that title for a long time. Oh, get a spatula. And Paulie B, tell the fans just how much love he has for him. Paulie B, lucky he's walking out of here under his own power. I'm here with Fang, who's going to be in the first blood challenge tonight. Fang, how'd you get that name, man? Take a look at my eyes. Oh, Take a look at me. Shit. You think I give a damn about any belts? The only thing I'm here to do is take blood. And that's what I do well. So Blade Boudreaux, Jimmy the Mook, whatever your name is, get ready. Because I guarantee in 10 minutes, you're finished. And it's over. Man, oh man, you heard it from Fang. I don't know, I saw those teeth. I think you can draw blood, guys. This guy looks a little bit off. A little bit dangerous. Let's see what he does tonight and break the barrier. And it's for the TV title. The first this is a challenge match right now. First blood. California, and tonight he's weighing in at 230 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen. He's mistaken, actually. This is a non-title match. The cable would probably be broken. Here comes Fang. This guy has been tearing up the Pennsylvania area from the APWF. This guy is unbelievable. He, just, look, he looks hungry tonight. Oh, just leave. And I, 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 I'll go on record right now. I think it's a big mistake for Blade Boudreaux to go into a first blood match with a guy like this. He put the challenge out there. Blade was willing to accept. I think it's a mistake. And the champion, well, we'll see what happens at ECW the Arena. He is the king of sensations. And I weigh in at 235 pounds. He is Blade Boudreaux. Boudreaux, one of the dominant dozen dudes from the NWA. He's highly ranked, but you know what? You don't get a chance to scout out this guy. You just take the challenge. You take a first blood match, a 10-minute challenge Ladies match here. Two conflicting four, styles four, once again. A hardcore guy like, like uh, Fang. This is going to be an interesting clash of styles here. This should be an unbelievable match. Oh, there match. you go. Waiting, no. Took his eyes off his man. Again, how many times have we seen that mistake made here tonight? And he is being torn apart. Fang is all over Blade Boudreaux. Shows him in the corner. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. That was a little low, that one. Little south there by the Cajun sensation. Now going to work on Fang. Big knife edge chops. Him into the ropes. Oh, oh. Line. I think he knocked one of his fangs out on that one. Oh. Drops the fist on the head. You're not going to see too many technical moves in the first blood oh, match. Here we go. Look at it now. Unbelievable. Just kicks fighting, him to the outside. Kicking. Oh, Fang looking to draw blood early. He's Ten going, minutes. He's into the audience for a chair. Oh, oh. It's solid across the back. One more. Oh, three. Completely telegraphed that and paid for it. Blade with a drop kick to the face. And Fang goes down. Now Blade's bringing Fang to his feet. Got the chair. going to... Oh, right into the back. Sell across the back. But that is not going to draw blood. No. That is not going to get the job done here. That'll, that'll, that'll open up a pimple real big, but that's about it. Oh, and again, a suplex to the floor. On the cement outside. But in 10 minutes, you got to concentrate on busting that man open. You want that win. Looks like he's going to go for a head now. Oh, he's measuring his neck. Oh, he's choking him. Choking him out here. And punching him to the midsection while he's choking. There you go. Solid shot to the head. Boudreaux rolls him back into the ring. And Fang, I think he's playing possum there. All over him. Solid kicks to the gut. Now working him off the ropes. Ducks the clothesline. Oh, oh the, ref the ref is down. down. The referee's been knocked down. <laughs> Fang's got him by the hair. Throwing him to the outside. Fang now climbing outside himself. This is where, if you're gonna, if you're gonna tear your guy open, this is where to do it. 
got to do it outside on the cement. You got all the chairs, tables, everything you want to hit them. The hard surfaces that will bust a man open. Now Blade trying to fight back. A couple of hard oh. rights. Oh! So face down. first onto the chair. Straight down, man. That just might do it. He's got the chair again. No! Completely missed. Caught more floor than anything else there with that shot. Solid punch to the face now. And nice. another face first onto the chair. That might have cut him open. That could very well have busted him open. I can't see how the rep is doing. Throws him down, face for, that's it, you gotta concentrate on the face, on the forehead, where you can get, you can bust a guy open visibly very easily. The referee's still down, now Fang's going over there. Maybe he's seen, maybe Blade is busted open, he's hiding his face. He's shown, that's it. That's it, it's over. It is over. Fang has beaten the television champion. There you go, oh, the crimson pouring from Cajun Sensation's head. And he's still going after him. He Another. wants more than blood, more than blood here. Oh, he's, he's trying to prove a point. Why, oh! Wait a second, the crowd got, oh. Abdullah! It's Abdullah the Butcher! Abdullah's coming to ringside, Fang hasn't seen him yet. He's got a coffin on the side too. He's brought a coffin Oh my him. God, look at him. This man, look at the size of that man. The hardcore legend of Duel of the Butcher is in the ring. And he's reaching into his boot. He's got something. Fang doesn't want any part of this. Oh, Fang just made a stupid. Oh, he's move. got a fork! Oh my god. A fork god. to the forehead! He's forking the hell out of him. Fang goes down. Abdul goes for him again. He's reaching up. Oh god! Another fork to the forehead. Blade Boudreaux, Blade Boudreaux trying to get an offense against Abdullah. He should just get the hell out of there. Oh, a fork to the face. You never, you never disturb Abdullah when he's eating. No, sir. Cajun Sensation gets the hell out of there. Oh, and a, oh another fork to the, the head of Fred. My God. The referee, if he's smart, would get out of there, too. You don't want any part of this. Abdullah will fork everybody in the Oh, building. look at the bloody face of oh. Fang again and again. Wait! Look at that. Oh, my, my God! This is insane! He's reeking in his mouth. He's got it in his mouth. Oh, oh reeking across the face with the fork of Joe the to, Butcher. He's trying to pull his teeth out. He's going to disfigure Fang here tonight. This is unbelievable. Fang may have won this match, but my God, at what cost? Fang is a bloody mess. Now Abdullah, Abdullah asking for something outside. Calling for the he's calling for the coffin he, to be open. He wants it open. They open the coffin. I don't think he's done with him yet, though. He's lifting him up now. Abdullah. Drops him down. Drops him to the corner. Onto the canvas. Here comes Abdullah off the ropes. Oh! Big elbow by Abdullah. Fang is tasting his spleen right about now. That was a nasty elbow. And he's got blood on me on that one. Oh, a solid, solid elbow. Oh, he's taking the fork out again. He's going back for seconds, it looks. Oh, look at the face. Fang is barely conscious at this point. Just a bloody oh. mess. Oh! Oh, oh, God! Can we change the camera view? My God! That is disturbing. This young wrestler could be permanently disfigured after this match. He is going to think of Abdullah every time he looks in the mirror. Or goes out to eat. Oh, and Abdullah off the ropes one more time. Oh, another big elbow. Blade Boudreaux had the right idea, staying out of the ring. He might not even be conscious at this point. Abdullah kicking him out into the into coffin. The coffin. the coffin lid is shut. That might be the best place to be at this point, unless Abdullah wants more. What's he doing now? Abdullah grabbing the metal, oh, the man. metal stairs, smashing it into the coffin. Smashing the coffin. Fang trapped on the inside. Was that enough for Abdullah's bloodlust? No, he's taking him out again. 
more shots to the face. What is Abdul trying to prove here tonight? Unbelievable, folks. I've never seen anything quite like Abdul the Butcher. Oh, that is it. Fang wins the match, but he's leaving in a coffin. What more can you say? I'm here with the Beastmaster, Rick Link. He's going to be in some uh, terrible trouble out here tonight. What do you say about that? Oh, you got your sources wrong, buddy. World Brass Knuckles champion, this is my element. Undefeated in thumbtack matches, the Iron Sheik, Abdul the Butcher, the one-man gang, they have all come to New Dimension Wrestling. And they left defeated men, and they left without my belt. So tonight, ECW Arena, Manny Fernandez, the Raging Bull. Yeah, you're a bad man, but I'm badder. Yeah, your former NWA champion. Well, so the hell am I. I've beat Jerry Lawler. I've beat them all undefeated in New Zealand. So tonight, the Raging Bull, the blood's going to flow like wine. Somebody's going to get hurt. Guess what? It's going to be you. The Beastmaster will dominate you at Break the Barrier. Well, you heard it here, guys, and uh, I tend to believe the, be the Beastmaster could do it. It is my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce the Raging Bull. Manny Fernandez. You know something, baby, when I got called on upon this show, I stumbled over a couple of things in my life that said that some men think they're bad and some men just talk like they're bad. But I'll tell you something, now that I'm at the world-renowned ECW Arena, huh, I'm going to tell you one thing about tough, baby. You can go out there and show how bad you are, but it's a different thing to be bad. And when you're born bad and you are the baddest, you know what it's all about. So Rick Lee. Mr. Beastmaster, the only beast you ever tamed, Daddy, might have been something that had a ponytail coming down his back. Because this bull is a long, hard ride, baby. And nobody but nobody has ever rode the bull. So when we walk that out, cool, baby, you better know one thing. Your brass knuckle title belongs to me. Just like everything else in professional wrestling world today. The bull is the master, and nobody else is nothing but disaster. So when it comes to taking down names and pushing out pain, ain't nobody but the daddy himself can do that. So Rick Link, ECW Arena, liven up, baby. The bull's in town. Thank you very much, Mr. Fernandez. You're welcome. Our next match comes from New Dimension in North Carolina. It is for the Brass Knuckles Heavyweight Champion. Overseeing the match will be President Chris Bueno. Our first contestant. He hails from El Paso, Texas, and tonight is weighing in at 265 pounds. He is the Raging Bull, Manny Fernandez. Manny Fernandez, been through some wars. The yeah. Rick Link is now coming to the ring. Oh wait, here comes Rick Link. A oh little God. bit of a mistake there, but look at Link's head. He must be a high flyer in the ring, huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you can see a lot of cruiserweight action in this one. <laughs> man, oh man. Gouges in his, like a road map, his forehead. Man. This is not going to be pretty at all for a brass knuckles title. Well, who are these two guys? Oh. Speaking of big boys. What are they, with the link? I don't, I don't know. King and Steel. The Raging Bull has a bodyguard? You no, know, he has two bodyguards. Look at these guys. Oh my God. Are they going to attack Link here? What's going on? It's Fernandez at this point. We got his body. Oh, there, there he, he is. Does. He's got a chair. Manny Fernandez from behind. Oh! 
Rick Link distracted just long enough for Manny Fernandez to take advantage with that steel chair. Steel chair? A plastic chair. He hit him with it either way. It hurts. I, you get hit with any chair, it's going to hurt. Especially coming from someone like Manny Fernandez. Guy, both these men, legends in the sport. Fernandez, formerly tag team champion, tag team champions in the end of the way. His partner, the late Rick Rude. And tonight, he's looking to grab the brass knuckles title from Rick Link. Throws him out of the ring here. He's looking around for something. Look, he's looking for approval. He ain't going to get it from this crowd, that's for sure. And here comes the Link fighting back. Nice chop to the throat. It's all legal here with the, for the brass knuckles. Boy, you know, we've talked all night about how important it is, what an advantage it is to have a, a manager out there, but to have two bodyguards, two guys that size, boy, you're talking a, a, a hefty, hefty advantage. Oh! The link goes right into that table, face first. Watch out for the bodyguards are right there. How do you concentrate on a match when you got two guys like that standing right there? Oh! Big chop across the chest. Man, he wants more. Now it's Fernandez going into the table face first. That, that table snapped when he hit that. Link looking for another weapon of some kind. Hits him. Chair across the head. Now again across the back. You're going to have to hit Manny harder than that with a chair to take him down. What does Manny have in his hand? It looks like it's a hammer. Oh, man. He's hitting him with a hammer. He's got the claw part to his chest. Oh, my God. Job. And a second solid shot across the chest. Oh, Link is busted wide open. It is hammer time. Unbelievable. Absolutely. They're heading for the exit now. Oh, into the table out there right by ECW Arena. Look at the blood dripping off that. Oh, that's a... Oh, Rick Link is a mess. Draws him into the metal rates outside. Oh, trash can across the head of Rick Link. Link now behind the stands. Oh, he's got a stool. Oh, and across the head. And I want to thank you for not making the obvious joke there, Bob. Oh, I was ready to go for it. But Link now. If he only had stool slop in there, he wouldn't have got hurt when he got Both men. That. Oh, into the grating. Now Rick blood dripping. Oh, my God. Oh, look disgusting. at the blood. Chris Plano. Chris Plano has lost complete control of this match. Thumb to the eyes. And now, oh, into the metal again. Manny Fernandez. Manny's busted wide open now. No contest. No, no, con no contest. Chris Plano has had enough. Let he, him fight. This is great. He should have had two professional referees in there and not taken the control of this by himself. Absolutely not. Not when you have two big men like this going at it. Two men with complete hatred for one another. And they're still going at it. And they're still fighting for the back. Fernandez just busted open. Blood across his face. Reverse. Oh, the into the metal post. Show them first. I have no idea if these guys even know this match is over. I don't know if they even care. They are just battling on. Rick Link choking him out. Chop across the throat. Fernandez returns with one of his own. And into the ring. They're not stopping. They're going back in the ring. We got to get some wrestlers out here to, to separate these two. Something's got to be done. This match is over, folks. There's no referee in there even trying to. Here comes here the come raging ball. Oh! In the corner. Nasty splash. Smaller man would have been crushed by that move. Trying to get some control in here. Oh! That was downstairs. That was blatant. The raging bull just got castrated on that one. Takes him down with an elbow. 
Look at the blood pouring off of him. Oh, that is just unbelievable. And now choking him with a chair. Rick Link completely relentless. I'll tell you, I'll go on record right now. If Rick Link is in that final main event, if he's in the battle royal with the rest of them, I got to give him the odds on favorites. A guy his stature, I got to think that he is the odds on favorite to take it all tonight. How do you throw him over the top rope? Exactly. Unless you, I, I, I really, can't see how. Really low center of gravity. I think unless you have three or four guys working on him at once, he's got to be the favorite to win this thing. It comes up, oh, flying elbow. Oh, too many of those though. He will not even make it to the last one. Yeah. Look at him. There's blood all over him. But he's loving it. Look at the look on his face. He's insane. And the fans at ECW Arena loving it. They love blood. Oh, and these are these are two granddaddies of hardcore right here. They started it all. And Blake throwing stuff around, chairs in the ring. This this war is far from over between these two. I'd love to see them in a steel cage. Oh, the gore from that would be insane. Fernandez daring him to come back in. Rick Link daring him to come out. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen that before. One come in, one go out. I don't know whether to order more medics for the back or security at this point. Things could get ugly backstage. Manny Fernandez, very high. Very, very high. And just a mask of crimson going out. Oh, he's... Chris Plato running for his life. Fernandez retains the brass knuckles title. That was Plato's retreat because <laughs> he ran back on that one. Manny Fernandez is a mess. Just another battle scar added to a face full of them. Just another day at work. I'm backstage here at Break the Barrier, and that's right, I told you I was going to bring it to you live. I was going to bring it to you straight. So right now, I hear that Phi DiCaprio U is here. That's right, Phi DiCaprio U is going to go up against the pit bulls. Let's see if I can approach it. Now, these guys are pretty big. They're pretty mean. So I don't know what's going to happen, all right? So let's go on over. There they are. I don't know, guys. Let's see. Um, Mr. Lash, is it all right if I uh, talk to these guys for a second? Well, you know, I, I've heard a lot of shit over here, you know, about you guys facing the pit bulls and the pit bulls. This is their house and stuff. That's crap. So, well, I don't know. If, if you think it's crap. Well, hey, if pit bulls are in such a hurry to come back to ECW Arena to get, to get embarrassed, hey, we'll, we'll do the job for them because they're going to get their ass kicked tonight. Wait, wait, wait. All right. We come to Philadelphia from sunny Florida. We come to the land of the Phillies, the Eagles, the Sixers, and every other shitty piece of professional sports franchise that make me sick to my stomach. Now you're going to bring back the pit bulls at ECW Arena. You're going to take Biff and Chaz Wentworth and Sir Ronald J. Nimi IV, Fidey Cap, and you the best damn tag team in all of professional wrestling. Whoa, 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 whoa. The best. Absolutely the best. You guys... Yeah. You heard him right. Let him talk. Don't ever cut me off with these two gentlemen standing behind me and with the biggest guns on a professional wrestling manager in the sport today. Like I was saying, you take us to the ECW arena, put us in this shithole. It's about 32 degrees in here. You got wood, metal, and a bunch of damn marks walking around buying cane masks. It makes me want to vomit. Pitbulls, you want to jump on somebody, why don't you jump on my ass? Forget about these two, because if you get in their face, you're about my damn height. You might be a little bit more jacked up than Sir Ronald J. Nimi IV. But the truth of the matter is, when Fidey Cap of you, Sir Ronald J. Nimi IV, and all these redneck idiots that pack the ECW arena, get down tonight, we're going to tear your heads right off your shoulders, shit down your neck, and finish your careers once and for all. <laughs> This match is an IWA Tag Team match from Florida. Our first contestant on the IWA Tag Here Team Here they come. And tonight are weighing in at 675 pounds. They are from Tampa, Florida. They are These two guys, man, as, as big as they are, as powerful as they are, they got a, 
they are also very technically sound. The two of them both trained in Dean Malenko's school, so you know they're bringing a whole lot to, the, to, the, to their game tonight. He's one of the best wrestlers out there today, Malenko, too. He is unbelievable. Oh, absolutely. So you know these guys, they're not just there for show. They know what they're doing in the ring. Here we go. Another manager endearing himself to the Philly crowd. He talks a big game when he's got two big guys around him. Well, sure. And their opponents tonight are being led to the ring by Philly Highlight Real, Ben Aston, Johnny Cosmic, and David Tessovich. They are no strangers to the ECW arena. Tonight weighing in at 650 pounds. They are from South Philly. Here we go, folks. Pitbull's coming home to ECW Arena, looking to get some IPW gold from Florida. I think this is going to be a great match, one of the best tag teams we've seen tonight, definitely. You know what I mean? Pitbull's been around a long time. Oh, absolutely. And, and the town of Fida Kappa U, like I said, trained by Dean Malenko, they're both huge, and they're twin brothers. You know, it's one thing to train for years with a tag team partner, but they're brothers, they're twins. They've been together their entire life. They were in the womb together, for God's sake. So they must be getting sick of each other, because I can't even stand my brother, and we're not even twins. Okay, that's another way of thinking about this. Well. But you and your brother aren't Florida Tag Team Champions now, are you? Well, not anymore. Okay. Each other, because I can't even stand my brother, and we're not even twins. Okay, that's another way of thinking about this. Well. But you and your brother aren't Florida Tag Team Champions now, are you? Well, not anymore. Okay. Hi to Kappa, you and the Pitbulls. Crowd welcoming him back to ECW Arena. Look at the size of him. Look at the head on that guy. Look at the size of the head on him. My God. Huge, huge necks, huge shoulders. The cap of you. Still on the outside with their manager. are getting on the men from Florida. Look at them. They're screaming at them. They don't, they're going to get in the ring and fight or what? Pitbulls trying to get the crowd going here. And Pitbulls have equalizers on the outside of the ring. So again, the manager shouldn't play too big of a part in this one. It should be two men on two men. Hey, boys. You're from Florida. And now you're in South Philly, baby. And you're going to get a South Philly Pitbull ass beat, boy. One of the few times tonight we can really say there's a home field advantage here yeah. for the pit bulls. Must have took the pit bulls like 10 minutes to get there today. Pretty much, right down the block. By the cap of you, you gotta think they had to fly in from Florida. They're completely out of their element right now, but they were the ones that laid down the challenge. They said, pit bulls, you want to come back to the arena? Man, we'll be more than happy to have you. And they said from Philly, there's only nothing but uh, that, what do you say, that P-word? Yep. And he wasn't saying pirates. No, not pirates. So this is going to be a good match. This is going to be a lot of action here. A lot of heat. And again, to, you know, another another big advantage Fight a Cap of You has. They've probably seen a million tapes on the Pitbulls. Yep. How many times have the Pitbulls had the advantage, ha ha the opportunity to see Fight a Cap of You? Probably not many times, if any. Here we go. We get the lockup. Uh, two men with a lot of power. Nobody's going to get the advantage. Yet. No, a lot of power, a lot of strength. Another lockup. Here we go. Oh, nice arm drag. Like I said, technically man, sound. Yeah. That big man can move. Pitbull's trying to get the crowd involved now. Early in the match. Here we go, another lockup. Oh, oh, Pitbull with the arm drag. By the cap of you, he's right back on his feet. Here we go, and now 
now we're just going to get into a little bit of wrestling. He's got him in a bear hug. What's he going to go with there? Pitbull reverses it. Oh, a little mat technique here. Like I said, this yeah. is not a normal big guy match. You don't see from the beginning. No, not at all. Great feeling out process here in the beginning of this one. Neither team really with any kind of advantage off the bat. Oh, here we go. Throw him in the corner, a reversal. Oh, and the big boot to the face. Nice arm drag there. Another arm Another. drag for the pit bull. And the tag. Here's going to be the key, trying to wear down, like we yeah. said earlier tonight, trying to wear down one man, oh. trying to keep him from getting that tag to his partner. Trying Double to close line there, man. Both of them working great together so far. Got to keep him out of the corner. Keep him out, keep of, keep him out of the corner. corner. Keep the fresh man out of the ring. Break of the eyes. And there's the tag. So these guys, now they got the power and the technical ability, not too afraid to play a little dirty either. Not at all. And with that manager on the outside, not too surprised there. Now, this, uh, it, which one is this? This is Fi or who's in the ring now? Fi? It, it could be Fi, could be DeCappa. Yeah. It's definitely not you. Not me. I, I'm not getting up. Me. No. no. Working on the arm. Really showing some really, really big technical ability here. Power's out. The more knowledge you have in there, the more confident you're going to be, the better off you're going to be in your matches. When you know that you can fight, if you want to brawl, if you want to go technical, and here goes the pit bull. Here we go. Oh, look at that move. Rolls him over. He's going after the leg. He's going after the knee, it looks like there. Oh, man. He's trying to take the knee apart. Hyper extending the leg, the knee. Gets to the ropes. Not a moment too soon. A guy like that just rip your leg right off. And then beat you with it. Oh, you're, you're seeing the effects right there. Not a whole lot you can do with a bum wheel in there. Still feeling one another out here. Now working on the arm. You don't see a lot of big men move like this. No, it's, it's tough to really look at Fight Cap for you and really try and pick a weakness. You know, they're both both teams are wrestling a, a smart, smart match, keeping close to the ring, to the ropes, knowing where they are in the ring at all times. They got the pit bull with with the bad leg, and you got one the fighter cap for you with the arm. So I'd call it even then. Exactly, I go for a tag right here at this point. Get outside the ring, you know, get your second wind. Let the fresh man in, but he's continuing. And, he's, and he's, he's opening himself up for an injury. Oh, nice. Suplex. It's a one count. That's it. Didn't even, didn't even go to hook the leg or nothing. Here we go. Now do a little movement here. Here we go. He's going to get him up. He's Lifted him up. Oh, oh almost no. Almost got him the whole way. Almost. Well, he, that left arm being worked on earlier didn't have the power, didn't have the strength to get him all the way over. Oh, nice job. Now, what's he waiting for? Get in there. Get him. Oh, see right there. Showboating. Too much time. You know, win the match. Then you can dance all Then you night. can dance <laughs> and you can pose whatever you want to do. But this is what's going to happen if you're going to do it in the middle of a match. into the corner. Now he gets a boot to the face. Oh, and nice close. Solid, solid clothesline. Arm drag takes him back down. Still working on the arm. 
he don't get a tag soon, he ain't going to be able to tag anybody. Not with that left arm anyway. There's your tag. Here we go. Pitbull's working to get a kick to the stomach. What do we got here? Oh! Double kick to the head. Oh. Going for the pin. One, two. I'll give you a migraine real quick. By the cap for you, one half the champions in there. Right now, he's got to get a tag. Oh, there you right. go. There goes the manager getting involved. Pitbull thrown out. Gets dumped on the outside. And he's getting kicked. See, here's your ring psychology right now. Oh, into the steel. Face first. This fight to cap for you is really impressing me. I mean, they're oh, oh. taking a chair right to his head. Yeah, we'll go up one more. You know, it, it's an advantage to have a manager. But when you have a manager out there who's as athletic as another wrestler, Man, that's, that's just another, another notch in your belt. That's like having another wrestler out there. It's like right? having a devil. It's like having a three-man team, basically. By the cap of you, firmly in control now. There's your tag. It's a rope. They're going for the clothesline. They miss. Oh, leap double leap Double frog. leap frog. Oh, oh. oh. Didn't get him all the way with that, but enough. It was enough to get him down. Just seeing a guy that size in a tempter her a Karana is something. It's unbelievable. Got him up for the slam. He's got, yeah. Oh! oh! Big power move. The ref not exactly in position again. Could spell the difference between them walking out of here with the gold and them loosening it to the Pitbulls tonight. But right now, they seem to be firmly in control. Pitbulls in trouble right now. In their own arena, too. All that weight, all that muscle mass wearing down on him, the power of that arm, squeezing on his head, cutting off the blood to the brain. Let's see, he's got it, he's got it. Trying to get the crowd into it, trying to get the crowd behind him. He's still going, he's That's, still going. Uh, hands up on two. Okay, here we go. Oh, now he's taking, the ref's taking him away. There you go. Yet another advantage of being twins right there. One's which. You see so many mask teams try and do that. These guys, you don't even need a mask, these guys. Nope. Exactly. Unbelievable. Got to be very, very impressed with them. You got the fresh guy in now. And you got the Pitbulls in a lot of trouble. That's two. No, that's two. Excuse me. <laughs> there we go. Trying to come back now. Elbow. Another elbow off the ropes. Gets him to release the hold. Oh, oh nice. nice trip. He just tripped him. You see, he's big, but he's smart. Nothing fancy about that. Got the job done. Oh, sledge to the back. As long as you can get him down, that's all. Whatever you got to do, you got to do. That's all that counts right now. Oh, big boots to the midsection. Whip into the corner. Oh, big flying elbow. Right on the money. Going for the pin and get one. one. Only two count there. Pitbulls aren't out of this one yet. But if you don't get the tag, it's only a matter of time. He's up to his feet. He's got him up. Oh, big takeover. Unbelievable. He's got the tag. Uh, He's going to get right, over and get his own tag. Threw him right to his own corner. That's got to be a tactical mistake. Back to the knee. Twins methodical, working like a machine in there, of the same mind. They, they pick the spot, and they both work on it. And, there's, and you can't look at one guy and look at a weaker member. There's no weak link in this chain here. Both guys equally big, equally adept in that ring. They are really a team to be watching for. And the manager is just a mini version of them. It's like a mini them. Exactly. Look at that. Oh, oh look at that move. That tossed him right on. There's a whole lot of weight coming down on you. Right across your chest. 
Snap suplex from the big man. Going for the pin here. One, two. Got the shoulder up. Going back to choking him again. I got to think, you know, Dean Malenko, we're watching this. I think he'd be yelling at them right now for not hooking that leg. You know, I mean, there's a lot of bulk on top of him to go for the pin, but, you know, when the leg is there, every little, you know, basic move, you work it. You take advantage of it. You can't pin a pit bull by just laying on top of him. You got to hook him. Oh, he ducks out in the oh, clothesline. Oh, beautiful clothesline. He's going to have to make a tag now. He's up on his knees. Go for the hot tag. There we and go. he makes it. The referee saw it. Here we go. Fresh man in there. Taking on both by the cap of you. There's a couple clotheslines. Both men down. Going to clean some clocks right here. Bam. No. no they blocked it. I missed it. Oh. And he's got the manager. Oh, take finally. the manager out. Maybe it'll knock his outfit back into style. I don't think anything could do that. Nah, I didn't think... Nah. But he's got that briefcase. Keep an eye on that. All, all four men outside the Still ring outside right the now. ring. They're brawling on the outside area. He's Here comes a the chair. chair. Oh, man. Both pit bulls with chairs. Both men hit. Well, they're twins. They should get hit at the same time. Like the Corsican brothers. Yeah. They feel each other's pain. Here we go. Draw them into the audience. There you go. And someone's going home with a Florida wrestler tonight. <laughs> These people are probably trying to sell them outside. <laughs> I haven't seen this much white trash in my life. Here we go Action, back in ba the ring. Back in the ring now. Solid boots to the midsection. Looks like the brothers might be meeting each other again soon. Oh, reversal. Reversal. No effect. Oh, but those clotheslines sure did. Sure had an effect there. There's been a seesaw battle from the start. And now the Pitbulls are on the receiving end of some punishment. Oh! Goes for the Huracarana. Ends up in a... Wait a minute. Oh, he hit his own... Hits his own man! He hit his own man! He got the pit bull that one. Uh oh, here comes one of the pit bull's friends. Bam! There you go. One, two. No. Try to cap you going for the pin there. This referee being very, very lenient with the outside interference. Roll up. That's it. Here's the match. Here's the match the board. The pit bull. Great match. That is it, ladies and gentlemen, the Pitbulls making the most of their return to ECW Arena, taking the gold away from Phi to Kappa U. Unreal, the new IPW heavyweight champions, the Pitbulls. They gotta be happy right now. They're going out for a cheesesteak now. Oh, absolutely, but you can't take anything away from Fight a cap for you. Like I said before, these guys, I think you're going to be seeing a lot of them in the near future. Very, very impressive. They're big guys that can move like that. It's unbelievable to see. Uh oh. Looks like they're taking their manager to task now about that briefcase. Sure, they'll be asking for a rematch very, very shortly on their own turf next time. Why to cap for you? event the barrier rumble this should be great this really should be the winners of all the previous matches i'm being hold on something's going on backstage 
There was a, there was a, a brawl of some sort. I, I'm... All right, as soon as we get some word, we'll, find, we'll get it right to you, folks. Something went on backstage. All right, as soon as we get some word, we'll, find, we'll get it right to you, folks. Something went on backstage. Here comes Max Justice, your first entrant for the Rumble now. This is a huge man, huge man. Oh, that top rope choke slam from before. I will not soon forget that. Looking very, very confident. And the second contestant is Scab! Scab, what an unbelievable Oh, no. Well, there's Paul E.B. coming up for his man. Scab and Max Justice. I mean, the weight difference alone. Unbelievable. Oh, God. I, if I were Scab, I would just keep walking around that ring and, and shaking some hands before I had to get in there. I'd rather fight his manager. Oh, here comes Justice on the right. outside. He wants to bring him in there. Oh! That's it. He's taking the manager with his own hands. Oh, welcome to ECW Arena, Scab. Oh! Into the metal. Oh, it's one thing to fight a guy your own size in a hardcore match, but when you got a guy, Max Justice, who is just all muscle, all power. Scab trying to fight back now. And he's doing it. Oh, he's kind of up there. Justice just takes the pain and then dishes out twice as much. Into the rope. Oh! Almost decapitated scab. The new hardcore champion of New NWA New Jersey. In a lot of trouble here. Getting choked by the big man there. Justice just just taking giving some punishment. Paulie B yelling at him. Ten, nine, eight, seven, scab hopefully he's gonna get some relief here five, with man number three oh, coming in. Double three, chop to the two, throat. And again, one. Justice can just toss this guy over the top rope at any time and but eliminate he, him. He'd rather beat him. Oh, here we go. Derek Stone now coming in. Oh, Stone trying to make a pact with Max Justice. Now the two of them are going are gonna to take on Scab. Oh, oh, <laughs> complaining about a bad lower back. He's going to let Justice do all the work here. Well, if his back hurts, he should be able to rest. You know what I mean? Guys in pain. You know, he wrestled a great fight. Oh, yeah, he looks like he's in a lot of pain. Walking around the room. Oh, clothesline the big guy down. Scab takes down Max Justice. Paulie B does not look happy outside. Oh, no. Here you go. Here's my favorite. Oh, man. Rick Link. Still a bloody mess. Look like King Kong Bundy's son. Look at his son. He might have been, he been what they were talking about backstage with that brawl going on. Something's going on. No, wait a second. I'm, I'm getting word. Apparently, Stevie Richards. Something happened with Stevie Richards backstage. I'm, someone find out for me, all right? I want to know. Apparently, Stevie Richards. Something happened with Stevie Richards, and, and, and he's out. He's out of the Barrier Rumble. I mean, he was hurt to begin with earlier on. Yeah, I didn't think he could continue. He had his, his ribs. His, his back, his elbow. His elbow was killing him. And here's Rick Link coming on strong now, and Derek Stone. Is that Riggins? Reno Riggins coming to the ring now, taking his time. Reno Riggins! I'd take my time, too. I wouldn't want to be in the ring with them. Look at all that Oh, Scab, Scab now trying to take on Rick Link. You know, it's new school, hardcore versus old school. I got to think Rick Link will take apart Scab. He'll pick him apart. Oh, look at him. Scab, though, trying to fight back. Look at two, two men. Look at two the huge men. Oh, Rick Link gouging the eyes. And there's Paulie B instructing his man. He looks pretty confident out there. Who's coming in next? One. Hopefully some help for Scab. Oh, no. Stephen Dunn, Rio Regan's partner. You got to think these two are going to work together. That's got to be beneficial for their team. For a Tennessee Volunteers. Yeah. Taking over. Helping out Reno Riggins. Putting a hurt on Derek Stone right now. Scab down to one knee. Scab is off in the corner. He's in trouble. Oh. No one been eliminated yet at this point. No. Scab is taking a beat. You got to be impressed with him being in there as long as he has. Reno Riggins now working on the kidneys of Derek Stone. 
Oh, oh what is oh. this? What is this? It's the Prince of Philadelphia. Who is this? Brandy? Brandy's name is supposed to be in this. Being carried out to the ring by Romeo Valentino and Cicero. Unbelievable. Tom it's Brandy now with Skip. Oh, right over the top. That's it. Oh, no. He's no way. He's getting he Rickling. He got Rickling over. I can't, oh I can't believe this. Tom Brandy. Brandy cleaning house now. He's just tossing everybody out. Riggins is out. Derek still working in the corner now. Whoa, Max Justice goes over the top. Brandy now with, oh! Brandy eliminates Derek Stone. It's down to Brandy and Stephen Dunn, gone! That is it! Stephen is done. Tom Brandy wins it! Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much for joining us here at ECW Arena. On behalf of everyone at Scoops, my name is Al Isaacs. I'm Bob Levy, and thank you for having us here. What a great night. Tom Brandy, the new barrier champion. Tom Brandy, unbelievable. unbelievable Thank man. you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Good job, man. Good job, sir. All right, I'm, uh, for editing point, we'll put in the, the highlights here. Uh-huh. Okay, um, I have to go, I have to go give out, I have to go give out the trophy. So you guys, thanks again. Thanks, everyone. Take care, Al. <laughs> hey, where did, uh, where did Al go? I don't know. I think he went to uh, give out an award. Nope. Oh. What, I think we ought to go back. Put the, go back to the ring. Oh my God, Tom! Hold on. Oh my God. What the? He's not happy with his uh, award here. Oh, what's oh my! He doing? No way. He's not gonna. No, somebody help Al. Al's not a wrestler. This he shouldn't the, be in the ring. What the hell's going on? Is this sh oh. oh my! He threw him through a table. Hey, somebody want to tell Brandy the show's over? Al's wife must be pissed, man. She's sitting right there. Oh, Dick. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, Teresa, hit him. Good shot. The big pussy. Uh, how come the wrestlers from the back ain't coming? I don't now? know. Hey. Yeah, everything's turned off, idiot. Hey, what are you going to do when ECW goes out of business? Are you going to rent your grandma and walk it down Ninth Avenue? Somebody get get down there, man. What Somebody a, better get down there now. What an idiot Brandy is. He has not moved yet. Be too soon. What an idiot. I can't believe this guy. And now he's giving everybody the finger. Thank you for coming out tonight. Oh, screw this. Get the paramedics out there. I'm going down.